A perfect brew every time. Dawnbringer's Coffee. The rarest beans. Fire roasted. A one drop of perfection. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose bold, rich, legendary flavors. Choose Dawnbringer's Coffee. The angel on your shoulder. Available at all fine Sigur Superstores. It is time to see if I can make the robot explode. Cyborg. Okay, robot. My first question is this. How come? <laughs> How come? What? Oh, everything that you're experiencing before you. How come? Do you mean what mechanical sensors allow me to experience it? No, Robert. I mean, how come? How come? All right, guys, I've waited a whole week to be back and show you this because it was late on Sunday. I ran into this awesome list by Sebastian Budzinski, who goes by uh, Budzik Online. And um, hey, Drew McFarlane, right at the top of the show. Good to have you with us, buddy. And thank you so much for sending me that pick. If you get a Poppergana playmat, we will pimp the hell out of you like we just did to Drew there. Um, he's in the promo and everything. And obviously, if it's OK with you, but we love for you to send in your pictures. We uh, just had, I think think Rebecca send in one and about two others but it's only about 20% of you sending the pics so get yourself smiling and uh, we'll make you look all pretty anyway so this is a beast I call this char belcher it's got a rich magic history and just kind of a deck that explodes um, I ran into it I ran into this and uh, then I've been going back and forth with um, Budzik online um, just kind of improving it as we go uh, we've gone through a bunch of cards, but let me get to the list. We only have eight lands. We don't really need lands. This is kind of a landless deck. You can win without lands, and you'll see why, hopefully, in today's show. We've got four islands and four seats, and that's it. We've got a ton of uh, low curve, meaning zero. Welding jar, kind of an MVV of the deck. Tormod's Crypt, uh, just one of. Uh, this has gone to down to zero. It started with four. Uh, we have Fairy Macabre in the sideboard for one. We really need to target something. So that being said, we've got Shield Sphere and Phyrexian Walker. Bone Saw, Lotus Petal, Ornithopter, Tooth of Chiscoria, Frogmite. All these things are free usually. Mer Enforcer. Uh, Foundry Assembly might take a little bit of a double take from some of you with Improvise. We've got uh, your artifacts can help cast this, so it's pretty sweet. We've got Thoughtcast to refill our hand. Somber Hovergard of the old school persuasion for that blue mana. And uh, Bastion Inventor with three main. This thing really, honestly, about 70% of the time will empty its hand on the very first turn. Another note, you always 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 want to go second with this list it's it paramount so you can get that mer enforcer out first turn so uh that's all the uh accolades for it i'm gonna look at the chat here and see what's going on here what's up trickery nonsense yep yep all right uh more than everyone says super pooper in the house oh yeah and then i got third in the uh pct with this uh similar list um hey man long time oh ravens no ravens back in the house and mtm tat one of our most ongoing awesome supporters so um anyway this uh I'm not going to say we're, we'll definitely win today, but um, if we're going to lose, it's going to be to Forest. Now, Stompy isn't that hard for this deck to beat, but I'd be lying if I said Elves and sometimes Ponza, but mostly Elves is a backbreaker. We just can't beat it. I've tried pretty much everything. I've gone with Holdout Settlements over Basics to just try to really fuel some hatred in the sideboard. You don't draw it, slows down the main, all these things. I've gone back and forth hundreds of times. Literally, I've been playing this thing to death like over and over again. So what I ended up going with was aqueous form. Now, there's some times you come out and you just you have like 
if you follow on the uh, community tab on YouTube, you'll see I've put some screen grabs up where I've got like, you know, sometimes 11 power on turn one. It's like, good luck keeping up with that if you have it come to play tap anything, you, two swings and you're, you know, your single digits are dead. Um, so, but because of that and because of the ferocity of the deck, sometimes if you do get to mid game, you end up drawing dead. You know, who wants to draw a shield sphere on turn four when you've got your opponent almost dead? So against the decks that that kind of matters against that they go wide, they can block, they can block the air, they can block the ground. And these things are cool with hexproof and stuff, but they can kind of get in the way with reach and the dinosaurs and all that stuff. We bring in aqueous form. Uh, for one mana, which is kind of very relevant for this deck, we put it on anything we want, and uh, as long as it attacks, it doesn't even have to do damage. So there's been some times I'll just throw this on a, uh, I don't know, Ornithopter with no enchantments or benefit, and you just attack and you get to scry. Kind of dumb, being that it can't be blocked, you really want to have a good target in um, the optimum target's going to be your uh, Bastion Inventor. But you put this on here and you're able to get in. That's the main thing. We need real evasion because a lot of things can block flyers these days. And sometimes uh, there's enough guys to buy time on the ground, that sort of thing. So we put on Aqueous Form, we're able to sneak in. They can't block it. And if it's on the Hexproof dude, they can't really do anything about it. And it's a pretty quick clock. Plus, it gives us the ability to scry every single turn. So if we see that land we don't need, or maybe a Lotus Petal we don't need, we're that much more likely to draw something good later. Okay, now, I've got a lot of things to do. I have tried Metallic Rebuke, uh, Velkadin Setark, you know, the one, it's awesome, but it's such a target for removal, it's so easy to get rid of. I brought it in against dinosaurs, tap them, but... It eats a bolt and then it's over. Um, Scale of Chiscoria was in the original. We tried Dark Steel up to 12 lands. Uh, shared Discovery is something that I thought, oh my god, why, how did I miss that? I played two, then I played one, then I played none. It eats up your turn. Yes, it draws three cards, but it's usually at the cost of a complete time walk and uh, tapping all of your men. So um, mutagenic growth, holdout settlement, all these things. Um, so anyway, enough of that. We're going to try to show you guys this thing in action. But before we do, I'll show you the sidebar. Another thing that's a little bit rough, hexproof again, green. As long as we don't see green, we might be all right today, uh, which is pretty rare. We got two curfew and one aura flux. I bounced between a lot of varieties of here. This is a very steep cost for this deck, but we do have Lotus Petal, so you got to think we have like 12 lands, really. Uh, Fairy Macabre, we have to hit the target we need. Uh, Tormog's Crypt is nice for like maybe the weird dredge or if you run in a TE, but 99% of the time you want targeted, uncounterable removal. I've been over this card ad nauseum, so. And then for Gut Shot for obviously Elves, Fey, and such. So, anyway, Super Pooper, thank you for that. We'll go here. And I can't promise you we're going to win like crazy. We, I think we're going to win quite a bit, but I can promise you excitement because these opening hands are awesome. <sighs> all right. Everybody get all that? Let's go. We're going to say this. We're going to say two because I have it set to where I can preset the load. And here we go. Now, oops. Um, I guess I have disallow watchers. Okay. Who cares? We don't need uh, onlookers, I guess. I'm trying to keep this list a little bit of a secret, but when you top... I was about to drop out of the uh, Popper Classic when I made the top eight. I'm like, should I keep this? I'm like, eh, it's not like I'm going to be running this in some big old thing. But here's the big thing. you got to play real slow and make sure you go second. It's so paramount to go second with this list. Thank you for that, Drew McFarlane. Yes, it is awesome. But uh, all the credit goes to Sebastian Budzinski because I would have never come up with this if it wasn't for him. And he wouldn't have come up with it without Brute Squad. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So like a little give and go there. So this is an awkward little beginner where we are going second so we can go one two three four uh we can pitch it to draw i think we'll keep this gotta keep some chance he keeps here we're just here to this is like a vegas on steroids this hand is just like roll them up let's see if we can get you know uh close your eyes chat oh <laughs> okay what did i did i just blind everybody with my head i don't understand Shiraz. all right we got a carrion feeder as long as this isn't a forest i'm i'm very happy it's fun when you go up against a uh, discard, too. It's just like, sucker! So, unfortunately, we can't empty our whole hand. I almost guarantee you that will happen today. The deck can get really, really fun really, really fast. And we got a few options here. Actually, we don't. You want to click on the thought cast first. Hopefully, we just hit a land, and we'll be good to set. You said no Rathers. Huh? All right. So, we'll pop this for the only blue. Hopefully, we draw into one of our lands. Or some other zero sources. Okay, we'll do this. We got a little bit of offense here in five, but we do need to hit a colored source. And away we go. We weren't able to empty our hand completely, but one mana will be set. 
the energy is flowing says mtm day yeah i'm pretty i've been jones in to show you guys this list but it better it better show me some good hands because i've been having just some epic like people typing stuff like is this real life you know that, those kind of comments uh do i think we'll just let this go take one want to get our critical mass up before we really have to uh use and abuse a lot of other things here a little bit of a slow roll here one more man and we'd have that but for right now we don't and we're kind of stuck in the stuck in the mud you'll see I actually haven't had too much coffee. I'm starting now. We shall see. Got my old ornithopter frame here from the artist Amy Weber, if memory serves right. Very good times. So lands with hands are pretty good things, but let's see what we can do here. I really don't want to block too much here. I guess I'll take a chance on... Um, Blocking the Cartha page, but other than that, we'll just leave things go. I don't know. F Festering Mummy's probably not, not used to um, targeting a walker. I could see it doing it here, though. Yeah. I mean, I could sacrifice a welding jar, but I'm not going to because I want to keep my Mer Enforcer intact for a big old feeder maybe later, sooner. Who knows? Doo -doo -doo. Here we are. And give me a land, give me a land, give me land, or something else. Uh-oh. All right, typical start. Here we go. <laughs> All right. They're at about the same life total, but if we don't start drawing something decent, this isn't going to be the best maiden voyage to show you guys. But stick around, I promise you for some fireworks. This thing is very, very close to being uh, exquisite. Like I said, I've gone up because of draws like this up to 12 lands, but then you get, you do get flooded. One lands is as much as you want, so. And there, there are plenty of games, too, where you just win because you, you don't have any lands. You just bomb out. Like, if we get that improvised dude, we just tap all these artifacts, and we've got a 3-3 body that can regenerate thanks to the jar, so. All right, not the best, but we'll see. We at least can block some goods here. I uh, can't really attack for much here. So would have been nice if we didn't block. We would have powered out two more enforcers there. So that might have been the better play, but not often I play zombies with this. So I abused it too much, says Ranos Raven. This be true. Well, I can block the frog mite. Don't think I want to do that, though. I mean, block the carrion feeder. I think we're just going to take this. We will go like this. That zero 3 is a pretty uh, awesome blocker in many of the games, but... Moment of truth, we're either going to game 2 or this is going to be over uh, real quick. He could have activated that and almost killed us. Might not need to now. Yep. All right. Land's hiding from us, but that's okay. I'll put down the L. As he's going to activate that. Let's see what how far away our lands were here. Don't get crestfallen. Believe me, these hands happen. We will win. Drop. Shield Sphere was next. Okay, we would have uh, kind of gone crazy there, but only with the artifacts there. Okay, well, we got lots of little dudes. I don't think I want to do too much different here. Maybe we get rid of a uh, Tormont's Crypt. Of course, that could be relevant if he uh, uses the whatchamacallit, the uh, go get zombies back from the yard. So I think I'm going to leave that. Got shots a little too up in the air, so I'm, I'm actually going to just stay as we are. We'll do a little superstitious shuffle. Throw things over here. All right. Yeah, boy, I know my buddy who lives in um, Isle of Man. They're locked down like crazy all over again. So no, we don't want to go first. We have an island. We have this. We have this. So this is the kind of other hand. This is so typical, man. These hands happen, are happening about 1 in 20. I'm actually thinking of getting rid of this because we're a bit clogged here. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. All right. This one I'll keep. We don't really want the inventor this early. One, two, three. Yeah, I'll get rid of inventor. Done. So we'll still have seven. I said done. 
There we go. You rewind and watch that hand on YouTube, though. Those are the kind of hands you can get in real big trouble like we did in the first game. Um, you, you can just get completely hung up and stultified. You've, you've got to curve out. So so many uh, zeros. We've, we've got some good energy here. I like to lead with the balding jar in case they have any sort of uh, shenanigans, snuff out and stuff like that. I don't know if it'd be worth pitching, but it'd be pretty funny, right? All righty. We can do this, 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 and this. We've got good blockers. Here's the island. So now we've got the pick of the litter. We'll play Thought Cast. Into Shield Sphere. Got two good blockers. We've got offense with the uh, Ornithopter, and we've got some uh, evasive flyers coming down next turn. So much better hand, but still haven't emptied it. You're going to see, I would guess, three completely turn one and whole hands empty. It happens. Best Ring Mummy, not going to do too much work here. We'll block these. Got quite a bit of ways before these Shield Spheres wear down, keeping track of that uh, negative counter stuff. Good to see all of you. Thank you for joining me here on Propaganda Saturdays. Back to the norm. And uh, when I do do the next um, end of month sort of, uh, what, oh, what do you call those things? The, um, the Popper Masters Qualifier, which I bombed hard. I think it went 0-2 drop on both both um things it was uh i was drawing just like last round it was one of those things so <laughs> but uh i will be just streaming it and then i was thinking well you know somewhat seems a little bit boring but at the same time um actually cancel that let's uh we'll block here and then we'll block here uh, i was thinking we could just eavesdrop on other rounds and stuff to keep kind of the show going without having to hiccup the feed and do other things like that so we'll see we stayed a nice healthy life total here. If we don't draw anything relevant, we're just going to keep um, bringing stuff up. Yeah, keep that ornithopter. That's fine. I guess we could regenerate it. I don't have many other things going. I'm going to regenerate it. we got to keep one artifact around. I think that'll work. I don't know. With the damage, with the negative, will it regenerate? I'm actually a little lost on that. Okay, thought so. I was like, oh no. Okay, well, it's still going to cost him two cards to get rid of our one. Fine. <laughs> okay, you want the Ornithopter that bad? You get it. It's dead. How do you like that? Okay, we get our artifact right back. We get our flyer right back. And once these... Uh, hands kind of exhaust themselves. Oops, never mind. Um, once these hands kind of exhaust themselves, we can start doing this. So our mana is really never dead. I come over for four. Feeling not very explosive this first opening voyage, but you will see. Ha! Ah, all right. One of the only sunny days this week in California. It's supposed to start getting pretty rainy this week, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, like I said, this deck, very, very, very close to just being like, so like, oh my god, watch this! Unbelievable! Check this out! That sort of thing. I think we'll uh, throw this in front of here. So go down to five. We stay alive. Got him on a four-turn clock. Hopefully we can draw some other artifact or source. There we go. We got more blockers now. We've got another flyer. And we've got him on a two-turn clock now, as opposed to last game, which we were pretty defenseless. More on the maintenance list, huh? What am I missing? Make sure to at me if you've got a question specifically for me, or maybe if I can just repost it with an at if uh, I missed anything in the chat. Apologies. Woo! Double feeder. I wonder what's in their hand. Life dudes. Okay. Here they go. We'll block here. And um, you know what? I think I'll take a chance here. We'll block here. Lazo Tapripa. 
I ain't afraid of blocking, sucker. Woo-woo. All right, we got a welding jar in the house. We've got another flying mouse. I sure wish these hover guards were artifacts. Another cool thing about this list is that uh, Gorilla Shaman's not that good against it. I mean, there's it's kind of similar to Brute Squad. It can be, but it doesn't really hinder our mana too much. And we have so many things so fast that if they want to play it and use up their turn to eat chunks of creatures, then it's all good times. I like playing... Oh, Paper Popper. Um, not much digital, but Popper again is fun to watch, says Ronald Raven. Ah, thank you so much for that. Yeah. Give it a go. So, yeah, we're just really hoping for um, the Ponza list and the Elves list. I always get them to about five life. And then that Reach dinosaur happens or they start gaining, you know, all the life critters and stuff like that. So, man, I Gem Palm Polluter always gives me pause. I'm like, oh, is he going to gain? It's like, nope, it's only loss of. So, not so bad. We got quite a few blockers here. I think we're going to game three here. Always making sure to go second. All right. Here we go. Again, we did win that one, but you haven't seen anything yet. You will. <laughs> you will. I feel like Yoda. But I'm not afraid. You will be. It's pretty sweet. So this assembler, I've I've often thought like, oh, I'll cut that down, but this is one of the most consistent cards you can get out. And that three body, especially with regeneration in the, um, what do you call it, the uh, welding jar, is pretty sweet. It's very relevant very often. You throw a tooth on it, and all of a sudden you got to want to be more enforcer. Pop kind of sounds a paper match podcast from the kitchen table. Yeah, we don't do those around us, Raven. We do those about twice a year because the YouTube ratings go like boop when we do that, but. A lot of you asked for it, so we wait, 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 and then we do it. But our cameras weren't doing too well last time. A little out of focus, and that was all on me. One, two, I hate this hand. Uh, we're really stuck here. So we're going to mulligan this. Way too many lands here, but we'll keep it. We're going to throw out the island. We'll keep this, throw out the island. And can we exhaust this hand? I believe so. Done. Open up the yards. And here we are. <laughs> Draw all eight lands or something, says Super Pooper. No kidding. Believe me. I've uh, Second I added like two or even up to four more lands, it was just like, ah, this thing is driving me crazy. Always lead with the jar when you can. We'll go like this. We'll go like this. We can't do it this game. Be I mean, exhaust our hand this turn because of the obvious uh, we're flooded. We've got two mana, so that kind of sucks. But we got them on a four turn clock just double activate this that's five a turn again wish it was an artifact we could regenerate it but we've got good defense here come to explain we can play on this beach you know ranos raven i am truly considering once all this craziness of the world uh slows down making a trip to brazil and definitely europe um obviously with the family but there's going to be a day or two there where we've got to go to italy and like brazil like the hot spots of popper and uh I don't know. Meet a few people because it's it's quite the uh, thing. Maybe every, maybe some super fan can put us up for the evening. Say it's not cheap to travel overseas. That's for sure, especially with a family of four. Four of which all play magic. Even my wife's not too bad. Here we go. Two mana up. Welding jar down. Our hand is out. This is when I really hope to see a chittering rat. I don't think we're going to see it here, but uh, we might as well extend our threats in case he's got a cast down. I'll try to get him for some damage. Spain is huge in MTV. Oh, I'm not saying it isn't. I've just never seen any two spots bigger than Italy and Brazil with their... They have some pretty crazy events. Ah, darn it. All right, well, it's two on two. Now, if we start drawing a bunch of, like, shield spheres and lands here, this is when this deck can lose, so... I know it's huge in many, many places. Why would you not use, uh, instead of Lotus Petal, the card? Uh, I do use Lotus Petal. What would you use? Oh, instead of Lotus Petal. Honestly, probably uh, hold out settlement. Maybe it modify the sideboard a little bit or just more islands. I've tried, um, oh, what's the one? Uh, Dark Steel Citadel. Didn't like it. 
We need some meat here, man. We've got so much four, so many four four bodies in here. We really need that now. Come on, where's our mer enforcers when we need them? Let's go, mer enforcer. Let's go, or thought cast. How's that? All right, or one of these. We'll do that. I could sit back, block, shoot. Given they're going for volume here, that might not be a bad play. You know what I'm saying? We've got more artifacts than we can shake a stick at. Two, four, not, not really. Uh, they might eat it, block. Ah, I'll just attack. They take one regardless here. Oh, I almost just auto-yielded through that thinking like, yeah, take, take zero. It's like, oops, got to remember the tooth. Sprig leaf can really get marooned if you don't draw the land. I'm telling you, it's really cool to win games with no land, and it happens. And when it does, it's it's quite dramatic. You've got the big boys out, like the three threes and the four fours, fast, and you're just looking around, going, "Where the hell's the land at?" <laughs> it's fascinating. Really like it. Okay, let's see. Ooh, do we block here? I think we do because that hesitation move. Yeah, I think I'll block here. I'll block. Unless he's got a tragic slip or something. That hesitation kind of a... Uh... Alright. I didn't take any damage. That's good times. Pablo, Pablo, hey! Man, we do not want to see this. Come on now. Alrighty. We're just going for broke here. I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we do this. We'll rock here, come on over for five, and hope that our guys stay alive. Eternal formats are more popular in Spain. Gotcha. Yeah, we've been having some pretty good kitchen table commander games, my son and I. He made a new uh, deck with that prismatic bridge. I think I mentioned it a few weeks ago. He keeps modifying it and smashing my face with it. And then I... Had him look over all of my popper cards, and he made a pretty cool, um, what are those called? Uh, the new the new auras that come out with Flash. Not so new, really. Um, the Omens. He made a uh, Jeskai Omen deck that's pretty sweet. It's going to be a close one, folks. Depends on uh, if, if and when they get their uh, removal suite online. Just play popper. I know. It's... Thinking start modern. Yeah, I've, I've played modern actually quite a bit. My big claim to fame with modern was a land destruction deck that used Noxious Revival to get back stone rains and stuff. It was very good auto quit deck. People were uh, quick to do that. All right, come on. We need some fireworks here. Not some. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's good times. I believe we do that. We keep that. We keep that back. We come at him for five with this. Let's do this. We pay two. We pay one, two, three. Oh, we've got to use one of our dudes. You know what? I think I'm going to leave this up for a blocker, given the life totals we're at. So I'm going to actually pay for that with this. We'll rock like this. Again, this isn't an artifact. Kind of frustrating. We'll go like this. Take half of his life and hope for the best here. Very tempted because he can block this dude. He's probably not going to attack with this. Maybe or this. So I'm thinking of doing a block here. Making him go all in on it. Pablo, do you play paper or MTGO? I mostly play MTGO. I play both, to be fair. I play kitchen table all the time. But my preferred medium is this. I'm a minimalist. I don't like stuff and fluff and things and... Uh, I love the digital landscape. I can have four of one thing and just keep using it. So, all right, it comes down to this, folks. Zombies versus Charbelcher. Yeah, NTM Tat with the propaganda love. I have two commanders, says Pablo. But yeah, go give a um, Budzik online or Sebastian Budzinski a uh, shout out for our very cool lists. I was very tickled to see it across from me. I think he ran over me with no mana on turn one. It was just like he had like 13 power or something. I'm like, does it always do this? He's like, oh, I need some work. And so stepped in, see where that goes. Okay, let's do some stuff here. We'll block here and block here. 
And then I'll throw a regen shield on the Ornithopter and hopefully we just win. He can block our inventor all day long. Far from over, we shall see. <laughs> Who am I yelling at there, Nimchimsky? <laughs> I do like those little head emotes because it's like, oh, I just said whatever. I look to see. So uh, this is a community, like a challenge, I guess. Um, let's find a way together to beat elves. If you like this list, sleeve it up. Have some fun. Um, send an email to poppercannongmail.com. Let us know what the hell we should do with this thing. All right. We'll regenerate this and just uh, pass the turn and hope we live. Because I've, I've thrown everything at it. Um, you can't really go uh, fade away in a blue shell. And that's why I often thought about using a holdout settlement or a survivor's encampment as a um, instead of the island so that we could dip into other colors. Um, but when I tried that, you had the thing and not the colors and vice versa, even with the lotus petal. It's frustrating. Clark can's always fun. Yeah, that's not a bad, bad grab there, MTM tap. Pablo's learning to play Tron. Good luck. Watch you, you just master it and they finally end up banning something from it other than a silly expedition map that was pretty ridiculous speaking of bands we've got a little 2019 remembrance of the last time we had a bunch of bands in the format so that should be a pretty fun little outing all right we don't take nothing let's see if uh, we're going to eat some uh, gem palm polluter sauce yeah you can't go cannonade um just because it costs three that's pretty much uh gone for this list Woo! Thanks for joining us, you fat-bellied bastard. <laughs> Where the hell was that guy? Okay, so if we do that, he's going to do that. Probably shoot that. We've got two here. We've got good blockers here. We're just going to attack with everything. Or should we? It's kind of obvious what he's going to rock with. He's going to block that, so I'd rather him not be able to two for one. And He's going to throw that in front of the body, so we'll just do this. And hopefully our... And for, Hover Guard lives. This used to be a mainstay when Popper first started online. It was really in a lot of lists, and I've always got been a fan of the list. So go from here. We've got a big old blocker in our Bastion Inventor and the Murn Enforcer. Yikes! Down goes our dude. Okay. At least we're uh, spreading out our threats here. <laughs> he probably gonna lose that mummy to it this can't attack i can block this regenerate i think we're okay maybe get rid of the lotus petal and go with sprig leaf mm. no give it a few turns i think you'll see uh what's up you need more removal, maybe? No, and the other thing, don't go with Metallic Rebuke because the only reason you want to bring those in is against the Problem decks, and the Problem decks have lots of mana. So they're very ready to pay for three. So, you know, that I always bitch about the uh, Terminate fallacy. It's like, oh, well, look, we're playing um, Improvise and such, or, um, you know, Affinity. It's like, let's put every card in there that says those things. And it's like, well, you got to look at what you're actually going to want to bring those in against. And I don't want to have sit and wait around cards because we really want to explode. And you haven't seen one of these hands yet. This is just, I don't know, probably first hand was terrible, but these last two have been like 40% of what it's capable of. So, Okay, here we go. And going down to one. We're going to have some fun. Very obvious how we block here. We go boom, boom. Terminate kills an elf. <laughs> yeah. Good luck at playing that, right? Yeah, we've really only... It's an interesting scenario this guy's up against. The Ornithopter demands respect. Damn it. Woo! All righty. And we got some little wiki bear coming up for one of our breaks here. Are you fans of that? Good old Conan O'Brien show. Always awesome. All righty. We go down to four. This is getting scary. It could be dead if we don't, uh, maybe if he's got like a, another defile for the ornithopter. Do we go all in? Don't we? I don't know. 
Well, that can't block. Those two will get through, but that'll be four. Hmm. Perilous Murr! <laughs> Demino Sweat the Propaganda Love. Thank you for that. Yeah, so we coined it Char Belcher with the approval of Budzinski. I didn't want to name it. It is his, uh, the genesis of the idea was his. I think he took the idea too from a, a modern list that was trying to do something similar. Quite a few cards I kind of had to do a little double take on, like, what? But once you play them, you're like, hmm, very interesting. All right, they're feigning some removal. Thought cast would be really nice here. But no, we get another welding jar, which I think stays better in our hand. Given that we just, I think we just go for the win here. Um, yeah, he can't attack with more than two next turn. So I think the only out here is the, uh, is this. I don't, let's make him use good removal on that. If he's got it. This could go either way. Welding jars are just MVP in these lists. No need to activate it twice. It's got one life. Is this enough? Ornithopter for the win! Or not. Okay. We'll make him hit one more. Is it enough? Can you get there, folks? Will the fantastic flying kite go over the terrifying zombies for the win? Oh, wow, look at that. Gets us to two. Woo! What a invigorating matchup that was. All right, we'll just jump into the next one here. Want a close one? Apologies for that very first hand. It happens, though. You play an explosive deck, sometimes you get explosively mad. We will create. Yes, and go. Woo! Down go, zombies. Close matchup. Usually, uh... Been running into you know one of the cool things about playing this list if you want to have some fun in the tournament practice room you usually run into swamps and so far this thing has really been eating uh minus just god hands mono black alive it's just been the, the best so yeah so rated arrows is way too expensive and rhinos raven that's a good point i've tried uh, weather the storm in the very second iteration of this and using you know the holdout settlement plan um yeah you just got to kind of stay on theme with it otherwise you just it kind of neuters the deck and you give your opponent even more time to get you and then it's it's uh frustrating all right gandalf the magi let's see what we're up against here folks Woo! thank you for using all the propaganda emojis i appreciate the love okay we are on the one, two, three, four. We could play that. Yeah, I guess we'll keep this. If this was a seat, this would be a really crazy hand. We'll keep it, though. We've got a nice Bastion Inventor, maybe turn two. Yeah, Vault Scourge. Looked into that, too. Not enough pump to really make it worthwhile. Another Swamp. I'm not going to complain about Swamps today. Got a pretty good uh, ratio against Swamps. All right. Here we go. Welding Jar first. Unfortunately, we're going to have to pay for that Frogmite. What's he showing us here? What is this new devilry? Another swamp. All right. Interesting. Is this big black? Is this is going to... The one with the corrupts and stuff? I don't know. Still haven't had a... Just a... I call them puke hands. Hope nobody's eating and have grossed you out. But, boy, there's just some of these hands you just... Bleh, and your whole hand's gone. But sometimes these inventors... That's why I only run three. They can get a little frustrating if they're in your opener... They tend to uh, show up when you don't have your mana. <laughs> Dreamer Stango missed the list, but this opening hand is interesting. Oh, this is nothing. Gets really cool. Alrighty. Well, we're up against Pestilence. This could be a problem. Just in the sheer removal aspect. This is when we really wanted our shield sphere to eat some good quality removal and not have to deal with this stuff. But one, two, three. One more source of anything. We get out that inventor. There we go. Well, we could pull off Inventor here. Oh, no, we can't. That's five. We need six. But we'll do this instead. Eh, is it really worth it? Let's keep our guys going. Only problem is that's not an artifact creature, so we can't really use Bastion Inventor for that. If this was a seat. This would be a whole different game right now, but oh, well. 
Thank you for that, Shiro Razaman. As we go into Chittering Rats, I was just saying this is usually good against it, but not when you're holding two Bastion Inventors. Apologies to Chittering Rats. You got me. One, two, three. We know what we're drawing. God, I hope he doesn't have another one behind it. That would be quite the bummer. You could call this like Metal Delver, because if you look at the Somber Hoverguard stats, it's a 3 2 just naturally, usually for one mana. And we don't have to give up any secrets either. Boy, if you're a UFC fan tonight, woo wee! Last Stylebender is in the house. If you look real closely at his right forearm, you'll see a Toph from Avatar The Last Airbender on his forearm. And on his belly button, he's got Twee and La, the, um, uh, the yin and yang version in the show, represents the moon and I think the sun spirits. I'm not quite sure what that second one is. Bop, 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 bop. Okay. Boy, at this stage, I really hope that Chittering Rats does not come back. It does. I might just scoop here out of uh, sheer depression if we don't draw something good. Alrighty. One, two, three, four. Still not enough. But I think if I do this, I can go one, two, three, four, and then pop that. Oh, I can't because this taps. Ah! If this sacrificed for a land, I would be so happy. But bink. Yeah, we need five, and we can't tap that for that. So I'm just going to concede here, guys. Can't block here. I don't want to uh, eat stuff. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Is that premature? I guess we'll hold off. Sure. I just, we're going to be here next turn, and I hate me some chittering rats. All right, we'll undo that. One, two, three, four, five. Ah! Looking at it more is not going to help. Ah, I guess we'll just hold back. Never know if the opponent's land is terrible. That's true. I know. I'm just like ultra caffeinated and excited to show you guys some explosive hands, and we haven't seen one yet. I mean, it's only been one game in, but still. Pop, 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 pop. Watch, we can see and just walk into three elf matchups, be like, ah! <laughs> terrible. Yeah, normally we just don't have a hand at this stage of the game, and uh, Chittering Rats is just a very terrible 2-2 uh, two, two for 3, but. Right now, it's representing pretty well. Ouch. All right. Well, instead, we just lose our crew. There we go. Maybe we'll draw into something. Little do they know, keeping an artifact creature around is kind of crucial. As long as they don't have uh, much more mana and a bunch more Edict effects, our Bastion Inventors might have some legs here, until uh, Guardian of the Guild Pack shows up anyway. Of course, let's not forget, most of our deck kills the Guild Pack and that it's artifact and colorless, so... The little shenanigans are going to be short-lived. Here we are! Come on! Fuel! Okay. Well, we've got Edict Bait in the Sphere. We'll play this for this. And we'll tap this, 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 and this. Careful. Use the bottom one for free. Whoop! Down comes Bastion Inventor. And with the other one right behind it, I can get a little reckless with it and smash some Delver Face. Might want to wait till we can boost it up with some good stuff. I just want to get out of Chittering Rats range. Watch. We top deck another Bastion Inventor. It's like, son of a bitch! <laughs> it's like, we only got three of them in the list craziness how's the list versus bw pestilence i think it's uh like two and one i've got again i my stat sheet is uh this is not it this is my show notes oh no actually this is what's his name okay that's no biggie let me just block that all day long and yeah, ninjas aren't too good against this fairies aren't too good against it I and mean, you're gonna have those hands where they just go crazy or you you know you're stuck at one but this is another one of those lists that kind of like brute squat where it's just fun to play if you feel kind of like in a Ugh, like you don't you, you kind of tired of the metagame tired, you know you just want something new sleeve this up i think it'll really reinvigorate your uh, passion for the game it's good times drew mcfarland in the house how's that mat treating you my friend i play on mine all the time it's nice and silky smooth so here's a Here's the bane for any uh, 
ninja, right? Come on over here. I'm just going to exhaust the hand. Um, really want to not have that, whatchamacallit, be an issue. We'll do this and this. Why not? Another inventor. So we smash on over here. Booyah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sending that picture in. So nice to have all three represented. I might have somebody of the female persuasion pretty soon. Nice and silky smooth. Yeah, I have to admit, I'm not telling tales out of school. My son has like four mats that are all official and they just feel like kind of newspaper. And then you touch the propaganda one from, um, uh, I think it's Card King. Is it Card Kingdom? No, it's um, Inked Gaming. Oh my God, they put like this silky smoothness on it. It just, it's nice, very nice to feel. More like shovel circle. <laughs> You're right. There should be this should be snow covered too. Like get that snow out of the way. <laughs> Holy crap! We're at eight life. When did that happen? I'm talking too much. Here we go. Well, in this scenario, I was uh, expecting kind of a um, what do you call prismatic strands, which isn't that good against this list either. But at this stage, it would be. But I'm glad they're not going to be out having that. So. Yeah, it's not so much art. I mean, we just supply the art, but their play mats are pretty sweet. I got got the stitched edged for a little bit more. Make a really durable play mat. I've spilled stuff on it, wipes right off. Doesn't. You know, I was just like very, very impressed with it. I just think most mats are too busy, so the designs that I came up with are just kind of for like focusing on the cards, except for maybe the third one. It's got the little color wheel in the middle. So okay. I just hope he keeps drawing that chittering rat. And three more. Dang it. Ah, I'm going to get picked apart in the air if things don't change. This is when we need aqueous form. They've got air power and they've got ground power that they don't mind getting in front of. And they're going to pick us apart. So I actually might lean on that for a change. Bring this out here. Laugh at chittering rats. Come on over as we get slowly wilted to death. Can you get wilted to death? I said it, so you can Come on, just take it. Be brave. So those walkers look kind of silly, but in scenarios against ninjas, it's like just turns them off. Might as well be a uh, journey to nowhere. Of course, of course, Skyfisher has something to say about that. But... Yeah, yeah. Hopefully so many, uh, we get to maybe the 20 or 30 mats brought in count that they they might approach us and be like hey you want a, a discount code be like sure i've only been uh, promoting your website for four years but <laughs> we're still pretty low-key he smoke them they do commercials on twitch yeah i do a commercial for them too we're still kind of low man on totem pole we'll keep bringing you the popper love I think today we've got uh, Golgari's Grill, the uh, restaurant of the Southern Persuasion. And you saw at the top of the show, Don Bringer's Coffee. A little bit of a rare treat. All right. Well, we don't have to worry about lightning bolts. We do have some flyers. It'd be nice of them to show up. Heck, even a uh, Ornithopter at this point. But I would really like it to be uh, one of the better, bigger ones. All right. Let's go. Kind of clunky. I wish I could have a tooth right here because it'd be fun to just cheat out that rat and be like, sucker! Still doesn't do anything. Bam! All right, we'll play their jar just so we don't get landlocked with uh, chittering. We'll go from there. So, like, uh, edict effects and stuff right here are pretty kind of silly. They use any sort of removal. Our dude's got hex proof. Prismatic could be an issue. Guardian could be an issue. A lot of things could be an issue. This ninja's kind of turning into an issue. Kudos to our opponent for uh, making it work despite our legion of defense. But, of course, Skyfisher's got something to say about that. We're taking two to their eight. So far, so good. Man, I sure wish these blue creatures were artifacts. That would really mean a difference. You beat me to Flame Tongue Kabu. I wanted to make a commercial for that. But yours was good, says Ronald Straven. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, you got some commercials too? Feel free to send a link to Little Fight or Shiraz. Be happy to spread the love as long as they approve it and it's 
not of the adult persuasion or something. Ooh, that's going to mean the end of the game there. This deck doesn't do too good against life gaining stuff, so I'm going to write the L already, as it looks like we're going to crash and burn good here. Uh, yeah, they just, uh, yeah, I'll just concede here. Outside of a no block, they've got us here. All right. Write down the L, go from here. So they've got a lot of flyers. They've got a lot of ground crew. This is when I'm really going to lean on aqueous form. They haven't seen too much. Cobb's not going to do too much. We didn't see many uh, enchantments there. Curfew, not so good there. So I'm going to take out one inventor, one enforcer, maybe one assembler. And I'm going to bring in uh, three aqueous forms for this matchup. Uh, really, really good card. Uh, ends those stalemates and uh, you can put it on something that doesn't even matter like a uh, zero creature and just start scrying so that you don't draw things like lotus petals on turn 14 and stuff like that so thank you for that he who dared yeah i've been having a lot of fun with it like i said i i did brave a league with it um i went uh i think i went two three i ran into elves three times the other ones i won but i'm not going to Tell you, I, I made profit with it. I almost broke even, but that was with an earlier iteration too. But sometimes I like to do that trial by fire and I just ugh, throw it out there and, and see what's going on. Tormod's Crypt, I'm going to leave in there. That can kind of be relevant when and if, but it's it's better for the curve. If you want real specific removal, we lean on Macabre, but I don't want to be uh, holding on to cards I don't need to. So we lowered our curve because we've already seen Chittering Rats and hopefully this will be enough. We need to go second with this list. You need to put a, when you play this list, you need to put a post it note because. There's, you talk about a Pavlovian play. That's going to be our new uh, popper term of our popper parlance. There is a, your muscle memory will just go crazy. And you're like, yeah, I want to go for it. And you're like, good, you can't do it. You got to say no here. Say no. We want to go second. All righty. Now, this is one of those crappy hands I was telling you about. We don't have any artifacts. And we've, and we've got the big, the big boys here. So we've got a mulligan this. Which won't feel so bad because we're going second. We're going to get our hands back. So we'll mulligan. Like this hand a lot, we'll keep. So, one, two, three, four, five. We can play this on turn one. Then we can play this right afterwards. Or is it better to just play the flyer? I think it's better to just play the flyer. So we can go one. Yeah, so I think we get rid of this dude. And we go with the evasion. It probably won't live, but we'll do that. Done. And here we go. Pavlovian play. Me and my alliteration, right? And sometimes you get these, uh, oops, they missed their their first turn because they're so used to the cadence of just like what happened. Happens all the time. Check this out, suckers. Take a deep breath. Here we go. Might not amount to much, but we do have creatures, so boop. I told you one of these hands would happen. They happen all the time. It's actually the norm. I would say it's right around 70% of the time. I'm very surprised we haven't seen one yet. Hey, Chittering Rats, how you doing? So if you look closely, we've got five damage on turn one with evasion. It's pretty cool. If an edict shows up, we're all right. Obviously, if they target the Hover Garden, are able to kill it. We're kind of neutered here, but we can still attack for two in the air. Need a Jedi Mind Trick counter the next time. <laughs> yes, that's what this is like, I tell you. Empty. Empty the cash register. Yeah, like I said for you old-time regulars, we got Wiki Bear, courtesy of the Conan O'Brien Show for our first break. And again with Conan, he's got so many good things over the years. I'm always pulling stuff and get people to check out that show. He's awesome, like he needs our help, right? Alrighty, we're going to diversify our threats. We'll go here, we've got here, and we come over for five. Next turn will be six. Probably won't be alive, but this way it's kind of funny. Bonesaw and company and Ornithopter can look down a coarse skyfish and be like, what? Bounce this. I love jittering rats, brother. <laughs> he smoke them. Well, I hope he's got four of them in his hand right now. Watch him time walk for four turns. Walk into a walker. Have to use good removal against it. Dismiss this. Seven unknown cards. Skyfish are showing up. We will run right into that. Fine with the tempo. I don't want that thing turning into other stuff. No Golem Foundry. Way too expensive. Different deck, maybe, but not for this one. 
Alrighty. We'll rock like this. We'll go like this. We're just going to attack. What you going to do? Sucker. Heck, with all these zeros, maybe Ninja of the Deep Hours, but it cost two. Might as well cost 15 with this list. Let's go, Core. Give you some more. Pow! See you prismatic your way out of that. We can do it again next turn. A little bit of a slow roll. Two, four, six, seven. I, I'm just going to... I don't want to get too greedy here. We can double saw next turn. In response, I just don't want to get marooned if we drop a uh, mur or something like that. I guess we could pay with a one for it at that stage. But All right. Life's online. We're okay. We win that one. So the majority of games that you're going to win with this are because of the puke hands, right? Blech! And that's what I'm saying. you got to be really careful in overboarding. And, okay, this deck's a problem like um, elves and uh, ponza, whatever you want to call it, dinosaurs. Uh but you've got to uh, really weigh that with how the deck usually wins, and that's usually how it wins. It's like, boom, we've got, you know, what was it, seven evasive damage consistently turn one. It's like, you come in to play tap or do anything or hiccup at all, game's kind of over. All right. Uh, if I was going to get rid of anything here, I might get rid of a shield sphere because we don't have much ground crew going on, but I don't want to um, really screw with the curve here. So we're just going to go like this. Yep, it's a glass cannon for sure. I would say it's a glass cannon with tempered glass. <laughs> it's a little bit more robust than that. Yeah, well, they're going to go first this time anyway. But I'm telling you about one in four games that it's that Pavlovian play. They just ugh, they get used to that thing. We might be able to keep this. One, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four. We could pop. I think I'm going to keep this. This is when the it gets very cannony. We can we can thought cast out of this, and so we'll keep it. Be brutal to have a uh, duress turn one here, but again, duress is dead ninety percent of the time for the rest of the game, unless you have it in the opening. So it's kind of a gamble on our opponent's part too. Sorry for my micro machine's motor mouth this morning. I said I've had quite a bit of coffee. All right, here we go. We'll lead off with a saw. This is not the Elon Musk Cybertruck reveal. Yeah, I think I spent just as much time trying to come up with a cool name for this, but if you remember Char Belcher from the old days, it's kind of how this deck plays out. So we could uh, we couldn't bust this out because that costs five of that. So we click on this first, then we use it, and if we hit a land, we're in really good shape here. Otherwise, we're gonna get kind of marooned. Four. Eh, it's okay. Bit dead in the water here. Get an island, we're really back in it, but tried. I had quite a bit of success with uh, a 10 land build, just with, you know, two more islands main, but this list seems so sweet. I'm going to build it in paper. Don't want to pay 80 bucks for pedals. That's like four popper again at playmats. <laughs> I hear you. There we go. All righty. We're in business. I uh, believe put out some heat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we just thought cast here. I'm gonna build up our board. Let's thought cast. Let's see if we get a bunch of other freebies. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Our dudes are almost out, but we can just cast this now. So look at this, no mana. How you like that? I wish some of these right now were the welding jar because we're up against swamps and they can kill stuff. But for right now, if they have removal or edicts, it kills some of our worst creatures. So that aqueous form is going to be doing some work, hopefully. Again, you can put that on something that doesn't even need to hit. It just needs to attack. And you get the scry benefit, but obviously it's a good time. So yeah, so apologies for a little bit expensive list this week in the Lotus Petals, but I do believe they're kind of a, a necessary evil. But throw in four more islands and you'll probably be even more consistent, a little less explosive. But that's what's cool about online compared to real life is that you can just have a um, a playset and make 50 decks with four cards and you don't have to keep unsleeving them and putting them in on these other things. So it's very cool. I'm going to run right into that with a Foundry Assembler. I'll tell you the 3-3 three, three body and popper is nothing to sneer at. 
Okay, this just got better. We'll play this. Play this. You know what? I think I want to... Um, I guess we'll just put this on here. Sure. I'll put it on this. Hello, this. Let's go. Oh, okay. So what that would have done, though, if we look at the card, uh, creature can't be blocked. That's cool. But when it attacks, you scry. And so it keeps you out of the crap hand. So we've, we're flooded here. We've got two lands. If the next card's a lion, bleh, land, we at least got a little bit of say in what's going on. All right. So we beat Pestilence. We beat Zombies. Will we beat Wiki Bear? We'll see. I got to go get uncaffeinated. Use the restroom. Hope you do too. And we'll be back right after this from the Conan O'Brien Show. Hello, I'm Wiki Bear. What's your name? Conan O'Brien. Conan Christopher? O'Brien, American talk show host who once made an uncredited cameo appearance in an episode of How We Met Your Mother? Wow. Yeah, that's that's a kind of an unknown fact. I'm surprised you knew that. I can answer any question you have. I'm Wiki Bear. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, here's a question. What children's character has a cat named Custard and a horse named Honey Pie? Checking now. <laughs> The answer is Strawberry Shortcake, who actually started out as a greeting card illustration in 1977. Yay! Wow. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. You know what's even sweeter than Strawberry Shortcake? The Boston Molasses Disaster of 1919. <laughs> when an exploding storage tank caused two million gallons of sweet, sticky molasses to flood the streets and kill more than 20 people and their horses. Giddy up! <laughs> Yes, I am aware that that did happen. That was a terrible tragedy, but I don't think kids want to hear about that. Many people tried to flee, but became ensnared in the molasses and drowned. Yeah, glug, glug. I don't think that's something kids want to hear about. Would Imagine you... gasping for air, only to have your lungs fill up with thick, sugary syrup. Yum, yum. No, not yum, yum. What a sweet, sweet death. No, not, no. <laughs> Okay, let's change the subject, Wiki Bear. Okay, to something really nice and happy. Uh, who wrote the famous children's book, Good Night Moon? Margaret Wise Brown wrote Goodnight Moon in 1947. In this classic bedtime story, a little bunny says goodnight to everything he sees in his bedroom, yay! Okay, <laughs> that is absolutely right. My kids love that book. Conan, you know who didn't have a good night? The late R&B singer Johnny Ace, who back in 1954 accidentally shot himself in the face with his own gun, kablammy! Okay, I... <laughs> I didn't know about that. No, I, I didn't. One witness said Johnny was drunk and playing with his pistol. His last words were, guns not loaded, see? <laughs> but the only thing Johnny's friends saw were his brains exiting his skull. I'm Wiki Bear. Okay, no, 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 no. I don't want... Master, what format is best? <laughs> Let me show you. Vintage is very powerful. <laughs> Legacy, too. Modern is strong. <laughs> They're standing, but the king of them all is Papa. How do you like that? Hey y'all, come down to Gogari Southern Grill for the finest in Cajun cuisine. Whether it's our signature brown scale brisket or the Guma Goulash, you'll know all of our items to the bone. Feed your plan at Gogari. Whether you prey upon the spices root wallets and wash it all down with our famous scorpion slash, or try our award winning Sakura steak sandwich with cross and kale salad topped with our own wicker bowl sauce. This is Go Goddess Sutton Grill. Go get you some. And we're back. We are really flooded here, but we'll keep. This is the guy with two lands, but it's one too many. All right, this is where we lose. We see a forest. Unless this is Stompy, we're in bad news. Bears country. Speaking of bears, see the little wiki bear emote there? I was fired from my job on Calendar, fact oh, calendar Factory. Says Snuggle Foxes. My days there were numbered. Oh, man, sorry to hear about that. I know what that's like. Every other person I know out this way is losing their gig or it's gone away or... Oh, come on. We're up against forest. We've got eight land and we've drawn three of them. I will not complain. I will not complain. Uh, yeah, I will. All right, Bonesaw. Bonesaw. Ornithopter. Ha. Hey. Ha. We got four. We got five. We got... Uh, yeah, we can't do either of these. Damn it. 
Either of you were a zero costing something or other, we'd have something, but no. Well, I guess we could at least equip here. Might be relevant. Propaganda, how's the Bastion Inventor deck going? Pretty cool. We're 2-0, but like I said, we're pretty bad against uh, elves and uh, forest other than Stompy, and uh, it looks like what we're up against here. So we'll see. Oh, a mountain shows up. Yeah, this is the uh, Ponza deck, if memory serves. Our hover guards are blocked by dinosaurs, and unless we have one of our super fast ones, we got boom. Okay, here we are. Let's do some stuff. All right. He gets rid of something we don't really care about. One, two, three, four. And give us some more. I guess we do that. Yeah. All right. Doop. Very awkward hand because we're flooded. If these were the zero artifacts, we'd, we'd have like 10 power on the board. Easy. Bone saws would be activated. We'd be swinging for 10 this turn. All right, foretold card. It's probably that uh, pack hunt card, the 3-3 three, three that draws a card when it comes into play. Very flexible mana base here. Let's see what we're doing now. Alrighty. Well, one. Um, hmm. I'm going to pay this. I think I want to. Let's see. We got two more. Yeah, we're kind of screwed on this. We'll pay two with the improvise here. Bring out our guy. At least we're edict proof here, but. Not feeling very uh, threatening at the moment. This is exactly why shared discovery I didn't like in this build because you get people on the ropes and you got to take a whole turn to draw three cards. At first, it seemed like just a home run. Like, yes, of course that card's awesome. But Bonders ornament. What does Ponza mean? I don't really know what it means. It's just uh, efficient red, green, sometimes black land destruction with uh, big creatures behind it. So I'll be honest, uh, my son would know, and he's played about a 15th shorter than I have, but he's more of a magic historian than I am. He's always telling me interesting stuff. It's like, hey, Dad, did you know? Okay, let's see. We'll pay for this with this, this, and this, and then we have to pay two more. Boop, boop. Sure, let's do that. And we could go one, two, three. We can't do it, so we might as well equip the bone saw onto our best dude and hope for the best equipment works even when it's tapped how you like me now <coughs> i'm thinking of uh redoing the um and by redoing i mean making two versions if you're a fan of the show you know we have the gin and tonic pun intended short version and the extended cut once uh, found some better uh, footage and stuff like that. And I think I'm going to be doing that with Wild Mongrel Chewing Gum, which, if you remember, changes colors while you chew. Discard your old brand for something new. But I got found some pretty good gum footage from an old video shoot I was uh, privy to work on, and uh, not often you do a gum commercial. But I was like, oh, yeah, I could reuse that. I could take that, zap that out, and, oh, damn, cast down. The best removal in the format, I say. Visionary showing up, but 3-3 three, three body going to be really relevant here. Bam, bam, bam. We have the edge to our opponent. God, this is half of our land, people. Good Lord. Ah, well, we're going to tap that. Let's see. We're going to go one, two, three. And we've got to pay two for uh, the mana to get this dude out. So this will work out okay. And then we'll use this for these guys. And then next turn we might start assembling some sort of offense, but I'm sure he's probably got another cast down around it. But being flooded and we have equipment, so whatever. But four is super flood for this deck. We run eight lands for a reason. We don't need lands to win. They help. One helps. Two's a hindrance. Three's disaster. We have four. But our opponent's at eight. That feels pretty good. Maybe, speaking of eight, maybe they're running terminate. No, no. I better write this down. Ponza. Let's see if we get lucky. Maybe they're flooded. Waiting on the ornament. All right. Cool. What do they got? Fog effects? Oh, is this Marasa? What's going on here? Oh, it's another dude. All righty. Well, we got an even trade here. I'll leave us with walkers, but not much after that, right? Hey, cool. That's right on time. Booyah! Let's go. Bam, 
bam. Pack hunt man. Booyah. Yeah, witching well, way too much to activate. I mean, look at this hand. This is a big time anomaly. I was thinking of the uh, equipment that. What is that? The. Um, uh oh. Here's where we even things up. Land crew has been established. We don't have any air power yet. But I'm sure the dinosaur is not far behind. Opponents at five. They might not attack here. Witching well is not good in this list. I'll emphatically say that. Alrighty. Well, we're going to put their feet to the fire, that's for sure. We'll do this and we'll just attack with everything. We'll make a nice even split on uh, our threats here. Who says this walker isn't a good creature? Bam! It's a 3 3. We're all about equality here. The walker, the assembler, and the foundry man. Woohoo! Here we go. We might lose two, but we won't lose three. Actually, we might, because he's got two Bonders ornaments looking at down at us. We've seen the swamp. That's the same art. Yep. We've seen the mountain. That's the same art. And we've seen a few of these. Yeah, I was hoping he wouldn't do that. All right. Well, we get rid of uh, three threats. They get rid of two. We're kind of naked here. It's probably an edict behind this, given that they're playing Karoo lands and such. I would imagine that with cast downs, a pretty nice little s combo. So, Slivers is always good. Rhinos Raven, it can sneak up on you. There's so many ways to build it. Always surprised Quick Sliver hasn't seen more play, especially in sideboards. I thought it only cost one being artifact. Scrying two might be enough. Yeah. There it is. Where is our. Uh, well, Welding Jar wouldn't do too good there. Terminate. Uh-oh. This would be another Aqueous Form deck. Believe me, I didn't want to play Aqueous Form, but it's just one of those things where it's kind of a necessity when up against things like this, or if that dinosaur's out, it's like we can't attack. We've got Death Touch, got the Reach Dude, and uh, we got to get in and do stuff. And they're at two. This is always where it ends up. Five between... It's usually five life exactly. I've had so many games where I get them in a five, and then two is even more frustrating. Thanks a lot, Nick. All right, we're going to just... Do we quit? Let's see some fireworks. This, this Our opponent's list is at least exciting. They usually have quite a few fireworks. but So this is like 80% of our land. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, but the jar works on everything else in their list. Helps our curve. Yeah, Hexproof and Elves are pretty bad for this list. Can have some good times with it, but I don't have any delusions that this is going to live through the turn. There we go. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking about um, Sebastian Budzinski. It was pretty funny. I was like, that's so cool. Your list? He's all, yeah. Based it on a modern list, but also... Brute Squad kind of inspired, too, and it's very cool. Sharing the love. Like I said, would have never... I uh, can't say that. Might have looked at Improvise one of these days and been like, hmm, I love bending rules or breaking them, I should say. And that I really hope today... I don't even hope for victories. I just hope you guys can see me win with no lands. It's such a neat little thing when it happens. So, all right, we fold the pawns, which I predicted would happen. We've lost every first game today, but we are, uh, we've won all the games. So let's hope that trend continues and we win out here. All right. But they're playing the deck I was kind of uh, warning you about with extra removal backup. So uh, a little frustrated on that front. Okay. Um, it's kind of a standard move here with this. I think I might even lose an assembler here. And uh, the crypt. And in this case, I think I'm going to go with all of these. I want to see these early and often. Creature can't be blocked. When it attacks, we scry so we can get rid of junk, like shield spheres on turn six or whatever, and stuff once we're established. Um, we've got to keep this sort of curve for tempo. This will trade with a lot of dudes, but I don't want to lean too hard on it. And we want to keep our air power relevant. Go to two inventors, and we've got a nice throttle body here. 
Yeah, let's try this. So fears. So roofs, pack mate. So roof. All right. And yeah, that's something I'm trying to improve on my game is not hitting submit so quickly. A lot, so many times I've caught myself like, oh, did it, and, and then who knows, right? You win, you lose. It's a time limit for a reason. I shouldn't have to come in at 90% under each time, right? Woo. All right, here we go. You know, we don't want to play first. We always want to play second with this list. One, two, three. Uh, two, two. Man, this inventor's getting in the way, but we'll keep. They're not the fastest deck. We can power out a thought cast if we drop one of our other things. So we'll keep this. Open up the yards here. You'll do this turn because sometimes they forget that we don't want to go first. But keep an eye on this kind of a list because as sets come and go, there might be a zero artifact here or there that ends up being like the, the Band-Aid that this needs or, you know, Welding Jar is like the hidden MVP of this list. The more I play it, really saves uh, saves your investments. All righty. Let's do this. 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 I'm just going to play this right now. Refill our hand. Okay. Not much worthy of a, a lightning bolt yet. All righty, we'll do this. Not too unhappy to see this, but please, no more lands. This is ridiculous. Ugh. Yeah, I'm too impatient to play Fortel. I love the whole uh, quantum mechanics angle of uh, the multiverse and such. But So normally this kind of would be a death knell with most decks, but this deck just keeps coming. It's like, okay, there went your turn. Boop, and we got a basic. And we got this. And we got a Hexproof Inventor. Uh, I want to get some meat out here, so check this out. One mana turns into... You want to play land destruction? Try this, fool. Woo! He's bald, too. I like him already. Got an efficient haircut. But again, just like with the... Um, what's the card? Uh, ah, shared Discovery. That kind of took a little heat away from Frogmite, right? Maybe uh, if we attack there and... Thought cast and hover guard, who knows? So we like this kind of stuff. It's like, okay, sure. There goes your turn and we lose a sphere. Now I sound cocky, but we're gonna we're probably gonna lose. This this deck uh, tends to get us. Do we have enough? This costs three? What? Alright. Well, let's let's draw into some more stuff here. If it's a land, we'll play it. If not, we can do this and we'll slay it. Foretelling can only be done in your turn. Uh, let's see, we can do that, to that, to that. Sure. We'll do that. And then we'll do this for our blue. We can regenerate these two dudes, and here comes six. Not so bad. But once the big boys start showing up, if we don't get aqueous form quick, we might be uh, in trouble. But you can see now with Scry, if we, like I said, show Lotus Petal or Sphere, it's like, I don't want to see that. I want to see another big fat body. I'll be. I'll consider it a little victory if, if yeah, okay, if we win one game, that's what I'm happy about. So we didn't see Aquas form. I would kind of uh, showcase that a braid's not that good against this list. If uh, welding jars in the house, we can just one for one it, and if not, even if I still I I want I want so bad to play until you guys see a no land thrashing. It happens. It's beautiful when it does. Okay. That inventor, I don't know if I want to see that in my opener hand anymore. You know what, I'm going to lose one inventor. Ah, but there's so much removal, it's nice to have that hexproof body. I think we're set right here. Let's go. Let me do a superstitious shuffle, go like this and this. And because we're going to move an island between bone saws, we've never yet lost a game where we put island between bone saws. Of course, we haven't won either, but we'll keep that uh, under wraps. Ha! Nah, uh, Gorilla Shaman, this deck usually laughs at it. 
mid to late if you're stalling out they can eat up your saws and stuff but they can't target creatures with gorilla shaman and like i said we don't really need our land so boop 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 we like this we'll keep we'll yield here we go It'd be so awesome if we can beat ponds i think i'm like one and seven against it Elves, it's about the same, you know, just craziness. All right, we've got to put out the things we don't care about too much first. Pretty good play there. Knows the fuel for the fire. That's going to keep us off of the uh, play here. Now, if he follows this up with an abrade, this could be uh, brutal. Yeah, because that's going to cost two. I always like to click on it anyway. One, two, three. We can't get this dude out, so we're kind of marooned here. I'll yield through this turn. I had a Pyroblast in this. I would caution against it. it just um, prolongs the inevitable. Waiting, waiting around cards aren't that good in this list. Here we go. Don't you know? Okay. At least we've got some uh, abilities here. We can almost cast this dude. These were lands, but oh well. Yeah, I'm telling you, Mox Monkey. Problem is that most of the good stuffs are creatures. Okay, we'll get rid of this. Getting slow rolled a bit, but we can still thought cast. We could probably do this. We'll see. It's kind of a nail biter. They're getting their mana built up. Bit frustrating here. We could power out this dude. I'd rather just draw the cards. We might do something like this. Let's draw some more cards. There's Aqueous Form. And we can just do this guy here. We'll go one, two, three. Careful on the Lotus Petal. Go to the very bottom and say pay one. And then we still get to keep it. And we do this. And we got a Welding Jar behind it. Double backup plan and Aqueous Form in the house. We might stand a chance here. But I still give our opponent the edge here. Keep your finger off the yield button. We've got the jar in our spot. Yep, yep, yep. What's this? The uh, dude? The thorn? Here comes the thorn. Is that is that what we're getting here? Or is this the uh, the wolf? Oh, it's probably the elf. Draws the card. There it is. I play this game too much. Woo! Here's persistent. <laughs> Way to auto lose. You throw that in this list, right? I'm sure you're not meaning that, but all right. Let's do uh, hover guard. All right. We'll do Bastion Inventor. Tap this, 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 and uh, this for one. Wait, no, we gotta pay this one first. Now we'll pay this with, uh, we'll keep it out. Lotus Petal doing some extra work here. Now I wanna put this uh, Improvise on here so you can't even block it. So now you get to see Aqueous Form work. We attack and we scry. We don't wanna see this, so we stay on the bottom. So one junk card away. Need all the help we can get. When you lean that heavily on an explosive sort of glass cannon effect, we need all the help we can get. Uh, this is true unblockability, and we've got the welding jar behind it. We beat Ponza! We're 3-0. and oh. All right. I don't need to use the restroom. We might as well just jump on here. Let's see what our next draw was. Hey, see? Did some work. Yeah. Good times. All right. Now, I was about to be cowardly and be like, no forests, please, in the uh, chat there, but won't do you much justice or, or whole point of the show is to show you new stuff. And hey, here's the maker of the deck. Everybody go uh, give him a shout out, too, if you see him online and say awesome and thank you for the list. There he is, Sebastian Budzinski, also known as Budzik Online, a member of the clan Propaganda. You can be, too. Find me online. Let me know. We've got one, two, three, four, gives me five, three, gives me two. Ooh, we can almost flatten out. Watch, he's going to make it our turn. Mulligan six cards or keep these seven. We will keep this. Maybe they're not on the same list. Maybe he brought elves just to shut me up. <laughs> we'll see. Very glad to have him. And that's what I mean, man. All it took was this guy going, hmm, what about this? Nobody's tried this. And then, uh, you know, gets pretty close. Sends it to me. Not that I'm some fixer, but able to uh, 
All right, so we're going to see a mirror match here. I've yet to beat him. We've played two times, and he's gotten me both. So, But the good news is we're on the play. I mean, we're on the draw. It'd be funny the only game we lose is against the same deck. But that's what this format is all about and needs. So fun tinkering. That's what I love about Popper so much. Cards never go bad. You just sit back, relax, have a libation of your choosing, if you are of that persuasion, and uh, Tinker, Tinkering Mage. Very cool card. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, we can just do this now. Let's get the power, sucker. Whoop. We'll do you next turn. You need a board wipe for elves? Yeah, I thought about... Clark can's about the best as far as the fuel and the organicness of it and the, and the curve. Or the um, volley. I think electricery is getting a bit expensive. There she blows. Alrighty, so this is the bluff of I've got the tooth, but I'm not going to show it. I guess he doesn't have the tooth, or he's going to let us know it with uh, uh, instant speed trickery, but at least we're going to uh, pull even if that happens. First things first, I want to get out our dude. We can go here. One, two, three, four. I think I want to come over with, with one of these guys. So I'm actually going to pay mana for this. And we'll go like this. We can still play this at instant speed and at least to hit for one if we end up trading here, but I'm not going to live in fear. Let's get out of here. These guys aren't that good here because there's just so much stuff that can be blocked, but we'll see what happens. Thank you for that robot. Yeah, go check out our YouTube channel. Have a lot of fun. Spend some hours. Watch all of our little playlists and stuff. Maybe learn a few things or take some notes and teach me a few things. This is the only matchup I've ever seen where Spell Blast might be playable. <laughs> yep. But sometimes it, those are the hands too where, you know, bleh, and then you're holding Spell Blast, just like we saw with like the Chittering Rats guy, right? It's just like, please hold on to a card. It's like, nope, you're going to have to play that. And we both got Welding Jars. Drawn a bit better. I think it's a rush to see who gets Thought Cast first. That helps. Let's put this on an evasive body. Ornithopters are the MVP of the mirror match here. But it usually doesn't come to that. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, yo. I feel bad for Budzik if I end up beating him, and it's the only time I beat him, just so you guys know. This is the third game. He's got me 2 0 so far. Got him to 5. Interesting choice in the art. Little cityscape from the top. There's the tooth. Improvised proof. Bam. Yeah, that guy's a little full of himself. He's like, behold. <laughs> it's like, you ain't that awesome, dude. Come on. Had a little window emergency there. What did I miss? Nothing much, my friend. All right, I guess we're going to take four here. Cool. I don't think it's worth tripping the jar. Trip in the jar. I just wish they would uh, release this ornithopter. Unfortunately, my ugly mugs in this frame instead of the beautiful work, artwork by Amy Weber. Tokasi, I think, is the quote. And uh, there's some just gorgeous, like, Leonardo da Vinci ornithopter art. And that's what I play. But everybody wants to see me talking, so here I am. But, uh, boy, I sure hope they release that. I would spend, like, two tickets each on those cards, even though they're just popper because these uh, they're all right all right we're flooded that sucks we are gonna just lean up on this to uh win here and i'm just gonna bash in these guys aren't that great let's go it's kind of a race for the ornithopter evasions everything here or have you heard that before right behold <laughs> Okay, they can regenerate their dude. We can at least force an exchange. I might... I'll try the exchange here. See what the exchange rate is, right? He's probably going to use the jar for something. 
keep them honest. We've got two Thopters. That's feeling pretty good. We'll use our jar on our guy. So we can maybe trade next turn. These guys, I lose my dude. But again, it's not that great. It's not like he has evasion. Let's see. That's targeting that. Let's make that resolve. And come over for the rest of this. Well... Unless he drops an Ornithopter, we'll be all right. No sense in leaving a mystery with a deck that our opponent knows we're playing. Yeah, Ginger Brute. Believe me, it, it took some... Uh, you don't want to be paying for spells. That's for sure. Yeah, and I don't want to be spending mana to just hit for one. I mean, you could argue the tooth. Aqueous form is one of those set and forget cards, so mirror. All right. After this, we're going to go to our Karn's. Uh, got a little Karn advertisement. Yeah, propaganda there. All right. Well, not much is going to do too much here. I don't want the crypt here. Welding jar is just MVP, as is the uh, Ornithopter. These guys, not so much. Um. It's not much targeted removal. I'm probably just going to keep one. Might even go down to none. I think that might actually be right. Yeah, in this matchup, I'm going to get rid of all of them. And I'm just going to bring in all the aqueous forms. I'm going to want to see these all the time. Don't really have much targeted removal outside of gut shot. Not sure what Budzik's on yet. I know we've been going back and forth. Uh, he even experimented, I believe, with mutagenic growth, as did I. Just uh, got to just really, really lean and pay attention to why the deck wins and it's those bleh hands that's why i call it the char belcher because those explosive hands you just win because you just played your whole hand you got seven twelve sometimes thirteen stuff out free 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 oh yeah this is a good hand um we'll keep this see how he chose to go second very wise, very wise. Here we go. So we have our choice of these two cards. We could pay five and play this dude, or we could pay one and do this dude. Fortunately, if Hover Guard was an artifact, we could have it all. So that's kind of a pukey hand. We've got the jar back up, and we can activate this and come over for six next turn. But I'm sure he's going to have four or five creatures out, especially because he's on the draw and he's up a card. We'll see. I'm not going to complain. We've got a good flyer in the hover guard, representing a five-turn swing if we put the bone saw on it. So speaking of bone saw, I switched my bone saw art too because I saw Budzik's version. I'm like, yeah, I usually like the old versions, but I'm like, that's just better art. There's a nice juxtaposition of the white with the green moss and all the tardigrades probably in that log. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. One, two, three, four. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, this way, I, I just want to attack, but it's like, uh, do I invest? What do I do? He's got that, so I don't really want to invest here. I'm just going to bring out volume. Go boom, 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 boom. Because he's got the spell bomb. So that bone saw can chill out. Because we're not going to use our mana for the turn to uh, instigate that. I've thought about running the spell bomb too. It's very organic. You can get rid of the problem esque elves. Problem is, they just come right back the next turn and it costs you a card. It'd be cool if you could trip it and then draw a card too. But keep the chat rolling, guys. I know there's plenty of viewers in there, but it's always nice to know that I've got an audience. And my chat isn't freezing up or something like that. Four to R1. There's a Weldon Jar. If he equips that Ornithopter, it's going to have something to say to that Hover Guard. They're going to meet midair and smack. Oh, boy. Pays to go second with this list, I tell you. i got to get those Mer Enforcement Mer Enforcer artworks, too. Just kind of superior. I don't like either of them, really. I don't know if it's worthy of switching the artwork out, but we'll see. Come on, anything. That's cool. Yeah, we can trade some stuff, but we both got jars out, so that's kind of weird. 
We're just going to attack. I'm attacking. Still here. <laughs> Spellbone was in the first affinity build I made. It says Nocturnal 32. Hey, Randy's in the house. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. My boy. I'll drop this since uh, we don't really have more enforcers of our own. I think it's probably worthy of uh, the jar. Worthy of the jar. Ah, but see, if I use it now, we can't play this dude out. So I think we're just going to exchange, and we'll save the jar so that we can empty our hand and keep our tempo up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I tell you, Kappa. Here we go. Who would have thought we'd see the mirror match? Play here. One... Two, three, four, five. We're going to take a beat in this turn. Half our life. Coming up. Yeah, Nocturnal, you've, been, you've always had a pretty good uh, affinity for affinity. This is uh, Impatient infinity, infinity. Char Belcher. We just, bleh, just throw out our hand. Retraction Helix. Can you bring that up in the... Uh, I forget what that one does. It's not often I can't recall a popper regular, but that one's... I know it's got a twin. There's another one. Turn it against tap. Return a permanent to its owner's hand. Hmm. If there was a way to repetitively keep doing it, maybe. But again, one activation of a Aquarian Ranger or some, or, or um, what's her name, the Mama Elf, I'll just call her, and all it does is act like a blue fog for a turn. Elf's problem is the life gain. We usually have enough ground crew and evasion to get through, but um, okay. He's costing us a quite a tempo turn here. I'm going to take 10. Spell... Spell Sphere isn't doing too good on its side, now is it? Quit talking Golem Foundry. It's terrible. I want to see this deck flatline. Throw four of those in there. Boop. But maybe in another deck. Ooh, Battered Golem. Interesting. Let me write that down. I think you got to have both of those for either of them to be relevant, though, right? Isn't that the way that works? Well, we've got a blocker. We've got a stalker. Let's try and see if we can stay away from this uh, tapping. Boom, boom. Well, yeah, it's just going to run into that. So we'll play this. I can block here, take some damage. Let's rock like... You know what? Let's let's put it here. We've got the welding jar. They don't anymore. And we might be able to do some something about this. Transformative cyborg plant. Oh, okay. I don't know. Gotta have macabre. Gotta have gut shot. I think you gotta have some aqueous forms. At least two or three. I've been kind of putting it together checklists of like, oh, it's bad against this, this, and this. And then it's like, well, what card solves all those problems? And so far, it's been aqueous form. Whew. Believe me, I'd love to have like access to snuff out or something like that. But without really neutering the deck, it's... Uh... He was sharing a beer with his keyboard. <laughs> I've had that happen twice. I actually have a keyboard I just play remotely my keyboard on my computer works but i got so used to it because i can play far enough away from my um monitor i like it i gotten too used to it so i don't have to hover over it and stuff but the reason i came to that conclusion though is i was uh partaking in a little bit too much port one evening richard import by the way and spilled it all over my uh the very first propaganda computer 
And uh, that that was that. All right, we'll block here and here. Looks like we're going to take at least three. If he activates this, we lose both our dudes. That's what he's planning on doing. All righty. I'm going to regenerate our dude that matters. Yes, MTM Tat, we are in the mirror match. This is the buddy of ours in our clan that uh, made the deck. I've been going back and forth with Sebastian all week, fine-tuning little little things. You've seen some tiny differences here. Aether Spell Bomb, we don't run that. Foundry Assembler showing up. Woo, is a nail-biter. we got to pay one for a big fat fatty. And I think I'm going to rock like this. Ah, or do I go all in? Let's see. If I do that, that's an obvious trade. And then we hit for six. He's at five. These guys aren't going to be that great against the others. Just going to come over like this. Oops. Not yet. Cancel. He might not choose to block. Did you have dirt chocolate with that port? Oh, Nocturnal, no. I didn't know about dirt chocolate back then. Darn it. I guess we'll swap here. If you guys are, don't catch the, the joke, my uh, buddy Nocturnal is quite the chef and uh, recommended. I like 100% cocoa dark chocolate. So most people call it dirt chocolate because they hate the way it tastes. I love it. But it's a whole nother level when you put uh, sliced ginger per bite. It's just the nicest. It's like right up there with peanut butter and jelly. So my hat's off to you. You and Little Fight would be awesome in a kitchen cooking show. You could have brindle boar soup is courtesy of Nocturnal. If you've ever seen that at the very top of the show, we have a recipe for brindle boar soup. Gain four life with every meal, but it's actually a broccoli soup recipe, courtesy of my buddy Randy, also known as Nocturnal32. Thank you for getting up early, buddy. I know you're quite the night owl. Caught you quite a bit on the shows where we were uh, of the Nocturnal Persuasion, but now. All right. Aggro on aggro. Let's see what's going down. We've got four. Mm, this is smashing time. Uh-oh. That can get in the way of something. Hellbent now. Pop him for three. Interesting. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I got to send over Mer Enforcer there. Or do I? Maybe the Foundry Street's better. Now, put him on four and four. Ah, gosh, I hate how this costs one. At least we're not flooded this game. This is the perfect amount of mana. Bacon wrapped shrimp on the grill. Reynolds Raven. Yeah, bacon wrapped anything. I think you could have bacon wrapped concrete and it would probably taste pretty good. Yeah, I guess we uh, we got to play that, but I don't want them to know we've got it yet. Well, let's attack with all of this stuff. Let's go like this. We'll probably, you know, do a trade here. We don't have any uh, regeneration effects, but we can hit for half their life. They can go one, two, three. And we're right up against it with the Hellbent strategy. Four's going to kill. Four's going to kill. Uh-oh, he's going that route. Okay, all right. Well, at least we don't have any cannon fodder getting in our way next turn. Half the life. We've got a nail biter, folks. Woo! Here we go. And we'll keep the surprise back because this probably would have uh, informed him. Oh, no, I forgot. Cancel that. Undo that. That's why affinity works. Yeah, jackass. Okay, let's do this to here and rock like this. Hmm. Oh, no. Should have played it first. Screw surprises. Play it first and then go. That's another reason I like this deck. Got a little cutesy there. Lost my affinity. Wah, wah. Yeah, it ain't no 90% chocolate. It's 100. Trader Joe's has got it and with some weird mysterious thing called cocoa nibs. I don't know what the hell that is, but they taste great. 
But ever since about the age of eight, I haven't had much of a sense of smell, so don't take my palate for uh, gospel. Here we go. Smashing on through. What you gonna do? Chocolate is like coffee, in my opinion. First, I can only drink it with sugar, but now I drink it black. Yep, that's how I am, you smoke I used to have quite a bit of junk in my coffee, too, and now I'm just all black. All right. How much does this guy cost now? Two? Cool. Let's do it now. <laughs> and it's smashing time. Do I just come in with this, though, is the question. Now let's get rid of the ornithopter. I think we've got the advantage either way. Okay. We're going to trade. This would be whoever's got the, um, what's it called? Welding jar would have been awesome here, but we'll go like that. We still got board presence. Really wish that shield sphere was maybe a Pyrexian walker or an Order Ornithopter, but for right now, we're going to be happy and hopefully our opponent doesn't top deck into something good. Okay. No creature, no Ornithopter. Do we get it? Are we going to go 4-0? <clears throat> hey, all right. We win. I'm going to roll to Karn's uh, Classifieds. It's a uh, courtesy of the Conan O'Brien show. Very funny little clip as I go use the restroom. And we're going to come back for the last round as well as a deck tech review and a uh, little Q&A in the uh, chat there. And we're going to throw some ideas back and forth. But we'll see you all back here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Can't make these up. Check this one out. It's an ad from the Jamestown Gazette in Jamestown, New York. It's a sweet ad for a little boy's Argyle sweater. Isn't that cute? $9.99 gets you that little boy's Argyle sweater. He's got his hands on his hips. Everything looked fine. But look what it says right here. It says, from our pompous little twit line. <laughs> Kid had it coming. Uh, can't make them up. Why would you? Next, we have one from the Newburgh Post in Newburgh, Indiana. It's an ad for health insurance. Health insurance and these nice elderly ladies right here in the ad. Everything looked fine, but look at this elderly woman's sweater down here. That just seems strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. We all have seen these guest ads over the years. They're always sexy and sultry. Here's one. It's a, it's a guest ad in the Upper Darby Chronicle in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. And it's for uh, stylish new handbags I, from guests. And everything looked fine. This woman's looking very intensely out to see. But look what it says right next to her. It says, watch your 63-year-old millionaire husband struggle against the riptide in style. <laughs> Here's one from the Charlotte Observer in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's an ad for treadmills. That's right, treadmill. There's a woman on the treadmill right there. For $7.99, you get that treadmill. And there's a picture of her working out. And of course, it has different speeds. Uh, look at the settings right here. This worried me. It says, walk, jog, run. James Woods is behind you. <laughs> and then check this out. Finally, it's uh, an ad from the Stockbridge Post in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. It's an ad for scented candles. That's right, scented candles, all different kinds of... There's glistening snow right there. Pumpkin pie, but look at this. This isn't right. Dead clown. <laughs> Dead clown. Thank you so much to the people listed here. Your continued support means the world to me as we move forward, always inventing, always doing new things. It's just nice to have so many of you aboard. If you'd like to donate, please do so at the link next, and we'll see you next time. This picture business is tougher to get into than I figured. Don't worry, a bad beginning is a good ending. Certainly. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. And we're back. Hopefully we can win this one. Go 5-0. Show you guys the cool Char Belcher list. Going up against another clansman in the Popperganda clan. A bingo banjo. Always a good match. 
Hopefully not that good. I hope to just run them over with no land. I, we still haven't seen one of those hands. But hey, here's a no land hand. Bonk, 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 bonk. Uh, it's close. We will keep. We're on the draw, which is what we want to do. Don't go anywhere after this round. We've got some cool stuff to go over here. Woo! All right. Yeah, it's always good to look back in memorandum at what we have lost. Some of the best swamps in magic. Brom. Sounds like some cool Nosferatu author of the 30s or something. Wow, this hand just keeps getting better. All right. We'll rock like this. We'll rock like this. We'll rock like this. We'll do some of this. We'll rock like this. We'll do this. Can we do this? Yeah, we can do this. Let's do this here. Go like this. Told you guys, you're going to see some good fireworks. Boop, 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 boop. Da, 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 da. So, three, six, ten power. Turn one. How's that for a finale? Suckers! This is when you kind of laugh when they have Chainer's Edict. It's like, okay, we'll lose a shield sphere. That's why we call it Char Belcher. Not a deck for people that are patient. But if you're like me, impatience is a virtue. Ric Flair is in the house. That's a little bit. Ooh, oh, it's a zombies game again. So far. Who knows? Maybe they've got some new tricks. Only well, they got two blockers out, and we don't have really any evasion other than the ornithopter, but we do have welding jar, so feeling pretty good there. Oh, come on, we're flooded already. Two mana? Who ever heard of this? Such a thing. Terrible. All right, let's attack with everything. Whoop. So that's at least three, six, yeah, ten damage. Would have been nice if we drew a thought cast into, like, some more tooths or uh, teeth. Tooth? Teeth? Huh? Which one is it, sucker? Watch him go to ten. Whambo! <laughs> Don't forget to type high after that. <laughs> I try to keep my keyboard a little bit clear. Oh, my clansmen know we love each other. I gotta be careful saying that these days, right? I don't mean it that way. I mean MTGO clan. I say clansmen anymore, and all of a sudden get flagged and canceled the way that culture's going these days. Jeez, oh. All right. Down with adjectives. Polluter showing up. Boy, he probably wishes that carrying feeder could block. I'll go get you a towel. <laughs> Tooths. Papa Goons. Ooh, that'd be a good name, too. Yeah, those are pretty sweet. Is that what those are? It's pretty hard to beat the... Um, what is that? Tempest, I think, had a lot of good artwork, too. Really dark stuff. All right, cool. There's something that does something. Speaking of something, let's give it something to do. Woo! So with hands like these, you can see it's when the deck just really explodes and when we love it. We've got defense here. It's kind of like a uh, Fairy Macabre, right? Once it's out there, you can't really counter generation effect outside of a reactionary spell like maybe a god-awful Terminate or something. Oh my God, um, Portal Three Kingdoms both had cool cemetery swamps. Yes, I think I remember seeing those too. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Well... Well, you're not going to lose anybody there. I'm going to go here. He's going to probably sack these guys to make that a big old 3-3. Three, three. Noted. Who makes a cemetery in a swamp, says MTM Tat. <laughs> yeah, no kidney smokums. Try my best not to make things <laughs> go that angle, but it is pretty alarming, some of the stuff that's happening, especially here in the States and especially here in California. It's like, good lordy. There is no road to redemption for these people. It's really sad. Wow, that's beautiful art. You know, up close, you look at it and you're like, not so much, but it's the whole composition just really pulls you in. Ooh. All right. You guys are going to be late for the game, aren't you? I thought it was noon. Okay. 
my oldest girlfriend's a soccer star and she's playing i think against pepperdine which is pretty close by and so we're gonna i can't go because i'm hanging out with my buds here but um they're getting a little late start all right what were we playing against zombies that's right hmm well, flyers are going to be paramount but they do have blockers Stop me if you've heard this before. I'm going to lose a Bastion Inventor because it's just going to kind of smash up against uh, Cannon Fodder. In fact, I might get rid of two. Three, three bodies, pretty sweet. These can trade, gain us some, gain us some love here. Hmm. Not worthy of an a uh, Fairy Macabre. Hey, I gotta count my blessings. So before you think like, oh my god, like if we win this one and we go 5-0, it's like, well, you know, that's uh, that's me putting the brakes on. We didn't see elves, we didn't see hex proof. It's almost an auto loss. If you look at our sideboard, there's a reason why it's built that way. So just know this isn't the end all be all just because you saw it do this. It's like we have plenty of crash and burn days here with decks that are way better than that looks, and this is giving you kind of a false assumption of like, oh, this looks you know amazing. It's like, well, chill out. Not that, not that much so. We're going to bring in three Aqueous Forms. Usually I have to zoom in on this card. Chant Creature can't be blocked. That's the main reason we're playing it. But this side benefit is awesome. When it attacks, you scry one. And so we can maybe, if it's middle to late game and we see something like a, uh, I don't know, a, a walker, we probably don't want to see that. So it, it serves two uh, masters. I think two might be too much. Might be fun to play a, a curfew if he's got a single solitary uh, carrion feeder out, but that'd be a little uh, reckless. Let's just keep it like this. What is your wife? What does your wife of your oldest girl? What? 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 I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Crash and burn? Never. Plenty of times. Actually, I think we've only gone 05 twice, but like quite a few one fours with decks that don't deserve that record, but. All right, one, two, three, four, and then nothing. So I don't like this hand. It's a little too top heavy here. If we had one blue, we might be able to argue it. So we're gonna say Mulligan here. We're really flooded, but we can kind of empty out except for one. So we'll keep this because we've got the Ornithopter with evasion. So what does your wife think of your old oldest girlfriend? Oh, I see. They get along swimmingly. Yeah, my oldest, it's pretty much his only girlfriend uh, since high school. I think the pandemic's kind of keeping them together, if you want my honest opinion, because, you know, it's not not like you can go out and do much. Um, we'll keep this. Yes, we're going to get rid of our flood. We'll get rid of this. But um, they're a really good match, and as a parent, couldn't ask for better. Let's see, done. Boy, oh boy, there are 21 fights tonight. UFC. Sometimes I get a little punch drunk, literally. After you, if you watch all of the early prelims, the prelims, and then the main fight, it's like, ugh, geez, enough fighting already. But I must have Roman ancestry because I like me some uh, good fights. All right, here we go. Let's all go out to the movies. Let's go out to the movies as we empty our hand here. Hmm. Well, this can't be blocked anyway, so I might as well put the aqueous form on this. Here we go. It's another Charbelcher hand. Blech! Come on. Have being kept a one-lander. Come on. Let's go. Been really getting into pickleball. We are, uh, I didn't think much of it. Looked like kind of an old timers thing because I always see people playing doubles, but my oldest and I have been playing it very aggressively and uh, getting a whole nother level of cardio about two times a week. We played last night even and uh, him and his buddy just against me and my wife and we felt old. We had some winners. We, it was always close, but we got, we got beat each game. Uh-oh. So then get the sarcasm. Only so much I can do. Oh, I'm sorry about that. What did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, um, of your oldest girlfriend. I see. I see. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Remember, people, I've got a little bit of this thing called dyslexia, so I can be a little, I can appear a little denser than normal. But it's because words go like this sometimes. All right, we got a 1-1. One, one. This is not looking fun. Yep, Gear Seeker Serpent looked into that, looked into the uh, that old school one. There's there's so many like oh boy, we are this is this counts as flood. This sucks. But let's see what we're gonna draw here. I'm just gonna cast it. There's no reason not to. <sighs> we can at least regenerate that. Seems kind of a waste for the festering mummy to do much else on it. But instead of two, we're hitting for one. So let's see what we're gonna avoid drawing. Well, we want to see that. Three bodies pretty good here, so we'll see on the top. It's nice to know what we're going to draw. I thought of um, Nurok's Stealth Suit. I think that's an underplayed card in a lot of lists, at least one in the side or something like that. But I think it's two to bring out, one to activate. And you can do it at instant speed if you have blue mana. That's pretty cool. Um, cool, cool. Good times, good times, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Got to remember, Frogmite can't be blocked. Might be relevant. Sure wish it was hitting for two. If I was a patient son of a bitch, I might be able to have that on a 3-3 three, three body, but what are you going to do? Ah, we can't regenerate that. Wah, wah. Good news is he's going to wish he saved that for the next creature we play because we'll have a welding jar benefit behind it. But careful tripping those jars. They don't work on all of the tricks out there. Alrighty. We'll pay one for this. Boop. And we'll use our welding jars as a bird of paradise. And we'll use these very gently down here as we keep up a creature so that we can block, double block unless some sort of combat trick comes out. We'll be alright because we've got two welding jars. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now's when we want to draw our Mer Enforcer. Very true, Reynolds Raven. That be true. One, two, three. As long as the uh, carrion feeder doesn't show up, I don't mind smashing into these guys. I've got welding jar back up. Depends what we draw here. Let's just make sure that we don't make that mistake of the other round where we go into combat and then do the Mer Enforcer shenanigans. We'll rock like this. Three's still going to kill two for one, so I'm going to lean on this a bit. And come on over for four. What does Luxagoth thinks of Deluxagoth to Luxagoth? <laughs> See? I don't know what's funny about it. It looks normal to me. I read one to three, three to one. Here we go. He gets bigger. We hit for one. We're going to take four. Eh, not the best idea there. Yikes, don't like seeing that. I love NBC, says he smoking. Which reminds me of my Necrodeck in the 90s. Yes. I've told the story a few times here. I remember Necropotence, that summer of the skull, early on, I think it was May or June. It was in the uh, 10 cent or 10 for a dollar junk rare pile. But the people down the hill knew that it was like, a, at the time, I think like 10 or $12 each. And so I'd buy up as many as I could every about Wednesday and then go down on the weekend and sell them and pay my rent. That and contract from below helped. Forced anti-games and such. Ah, man, we are just... Uh, as cool as the opening hands of the last two have been, this is when the deck, you just feel like... Uh, this is when I really want Aqueous form, right? Who wants to see Lotus Petal here when we're just dead on arrival Ooh, uh, well if I keep this dude back he can regenerate and smash uh, two to one yeah I think I'm just gonna slow roll this guys really wish I had a little bit more firepower here but oh nice force of will yeah it fetched a pretty penny I've yet to see anybody's collection rival that of Nocturnal in the chat. The guy needs a couple family-sized living rooms to keep his collection. And the, and it's built vertically, too. It's not on the floor. I bet, my friend, you could probably put your card collection on about 10 football fields and cover the surface of all of them. That's saying something. 
and maybe without lands. <laughs> That's craziness. Alrighty, let's get rid of the undying dude. Bonk. So we take two. We're not winning the ratio here. That carrying feeder is just going to keep getting bigger. Thought of even playing snapback in this. I uh, know we played a blue blitz build last week. Ooh, I don't like seeing that. God darn it. Life represents a little bit too much of a even swing. Well, at least we know we'll block that reaver next turn. We've got to slow roll this a little bit. We really need to see like a mirror enforcer or something big time. Got a feeling they're sitting on either a village rights or uh, another defile. Remember when Force of Nature was a good card? I do. I was reading the Duelist magazine, and they had a they had a Bayou version of it that used uh, Elves of the Deep Shadow and other stuff to kind of uh, ramp into it when ramp before ramp was a thing. And it was I was all high on it, and I was like, I can finally use these. All right, let's play this out. I'm tempted to just keep these dudes back. I'm going to attack with the Ornithopter, and then I'll throw the um, Bone Saw on the uh, Foundry Street via the Lotus Petal. We don't really need our mana for much anymore. We're really flooded here. Who needs four mana? Who ever heard of such a thing? All right. Oh, yeah. I want to choose this one, and we'll sacrifice the Lotus Petal for it. I only have 15 five divider boxes and mostly commons. I don't know about that. What about your binders? And your boxes? And the storage? And the stuff in the trunk? Bingo Banjo. Pretty cool name. I think we're going to be going to a game three here. I sense he's got some defile trickery and such. All right, maybe not. Another feeder. It's feeling pretty good. Got to kind of make him pay for this slow roll here. Ha! <sighs> that carrying feeder could get awfully big, awfully quick. Yeah, I wish they'd bring it back to do this, but just like most books and stuff, probably be fall on deaf ears. All right. Well, we've got to do this. The obvious play is to sack that, which... Probably is not worth doing. He probably wants to go to 20 instead. This is only a 2-2 two -two at the moment. But boy, is that going to get big. Imagine he's going to drop the mummy to the assist, uh, assembly assemblyman, <laughs> the assembler. Scry. Oh, it doesn't gain life that way. That's interesting. Okay, decks like this, I would always lean on a Tragic Slip. It's very hard to beat that card for one mana if you have a, a deck with a lot of built-in sacrifice. So we're building something like that. Check it out. I really like seeing Frogmite here. Just another body to get in the way. As we try to get in our way, a 3-3 three, three is pretty cool. But we really need to kind of uh, go to work here. I'll rock this dude here. As we attack with this. Just going to go like this. Going to go all in here. We are at 11. Redeemed by 20. Oh, that's a huge area. Rough calculation says football field is 100% cards. MTM tap with the popper points. And remember, folks, 10,000. We burn a white bordered card of your choosing live on air. Smoke alarms be damned. Ignore it, Ranos Raven. I love you just a little bit more for saying that. I remember that. Yeah. That sneaky, impish grin. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, little fight. Right after the show, which will probably be in about 20 minutes, let's do that thing. You know what I'm talking about. Well, we're still kind of on. Actually, before we even end the show, we can just do it live if you want to. I think we ought to do that. I really want to make him over invest in this. He gets two, two gets that. 
Let's block here, if it's all right with you. So that way it'll be a bit of housekeeping after the show, and we don't have to roll and throw people off thinking we're going live again. I'll just do that quick little stuff and then uh, go from there. So you might see some shenanigans at the end of the show. But Captain Technotard here needs some help. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to regenerate this. And hopefully, that's all we got to do. Regeneration shield. What on earth is the white mana for? Hmm. Cool. We got another blocker. This is when the cannon fodder kind of matchups show up. This is why this deck's really good against Stompy. I could just attack here. Yeah, maybe I do that. Get rid of some of his uh, cannon fodder esque. We've still got enough blockers here. Real combo was Nor plus Icy Manipulator. Yep. Good old. Yeah, I like those little uh, Eureka moments people would have when you're teaching them magic and they'd see the Icy Manipulator royal combo and they're like, oh, interesting. That's usually when they got bit. We've tried it all. This is a close game. That welding jar is doing some work. All right. Another mummy shows up, and our air power superiority might be gone real quick. I tell you, daily, every day this week, I wish our blue creatures were artifact creatures in this, but. Ha. Huh. So if you would, Litify, just have everything ready so we don't have to waste too much time as far as. Uh, what I'm going to need to do or write in or whatever like that. I'd appreciate it, my friend. Is the engineer of the SS metagame, our imaginary ship of Popper, flying through the universe, fighting against... Oh, damn. This is going to make a difference. That's going to keep a minute. Nice tech. Throwing in a little harsh sustenance love. We cannot regenerate it, so I don't know what I'm waiting for. Goes up to 14. Man, that's going to really mean something. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll just uh, be done with it. That's interesting. Gains four and then he loses four. I think it's worth it using the uh, the dude here. Oh, damn it. Oh, I hate when I fall for that. Look at that last sentence. Can't be regenerated. Uh, well, at least I did it so you guys maybe won't. But that hasn't stopped me about every other day ma making that screw up. You always get that little aha, but now he two for one us with that, so that sucks. Looks like we're going to a game three. Yeah, we can just block for days here. We don't want to block with anything like that, so we'll block uh, here. What is this a two two? And it's a four four. I guess we block here. Take five. Or do we do this? Sure. Here we go. Let's get in the counter. All right. That's the ornithopter. We're just going to really... Uh, Turn off our air power assault with bone saw because we could equip it to make it a zero one. So careful before you go that route. But we do have two dudes out. Thanks to my misplay, I think we're going to a game three here. This helps a little bit, but it's just going to prolong the inevitable. As we equip bone saw here, which will do all of a whole lot of nothing. Who knows? Maybe we walk into a merm forcer. What could save us here? Even. The, it's a 4-4. Four, four. I hate dark blue against black. It's like, nice call, wizards. <laughs> I got pretty good eyesight, despite the uh, what these will tell you. Alrighty. Well, he can uh, go all in with this and make it a uh, 6. Let's see if he'll do that. This is a 3. What am I doing? We lose this game. Let's block here and here. We'll regenerate here, and then we'll go see if there's a... F 
has the, the fridge has a beer. Snuff out a little, yes, yeah, spinning darkness. But I believe a welding jar would work against spinning darkness. I don't believe that has any errata about that. But nice to see a thought cast show up. All right, that's interesting. A little dead here, though. All right, what am I doing? Let's go to game three. I'm just like keep putting a band aid on everything. Okay. That's the very first second game we've lost, so this does not bode well. Undefeated so far. So far we haven't seen too many uh, forests. Oh, let's see. We've got... Bring back in one of these dudes. No. They've just got too many dudes course one of them would be a good target for the aqueous form let me just go with two here all right this will be the last game of the day don't go anywhere i've got lots to say thunderclap yeah one of the funnest things you can do as a deck builder is type in rather than and uh, make sure your uh, number of cards is set to zero so you can see all the uh all the gifts under the sea we do not want to play first i'm I consider it a little moral victory that I have not screwed that up because I do that pretty often. Boom, boom. I think I'll keep this. It's kind of clunky. If this was an artifact land, it'd be beautiful. But so we're going to go right now. We'll probably get a third, which will power this out, which will trigger this. We'll keep this. It's just right on the right on the edge here. Okay. One land is flooded here. Do you think that Flame Tongue Cavu is okay on Popper? I do, Starkey77. Thank you for using the Popper points. Yep. I don't even think uh, outside of Ponza, I don't even think there's a home for it if it was uh, down downshifted. My big uh, prediction has always been the card uh, Vampire Nighthawk. I think that's going to see uh, a downgrade. And you will still see people playing the horrible Chittering Rats back even then. NBC needs to move on. Bingo Banjo with the zombie tech. All right, just give us another artifact. Come on now. Let's get that thought cast online. Bastion Inventor with Aqueous Form is going to be money. Normally, a big 4 4 hex proof is nothing against a deck that goes as wide as zombies, but with Aqueous Form, it's Kind of a death now. Come on, deck. Let's make sure I can do all this stuff. Cancel. I don't want to have to use this on this, but I will. We'll put aqueous form on this. Son of a gun. Hate doing that. We do have extra though, but we need to find a land here. <clears throat> Let's see what we're gonna find. Do I want to see that next turn? I do. We'll say top. I guess we might as well uh, shoot something, right? There we go. I would be happy to see you proven right about Nighthawk. Yes. Avalanche Riders would be <laughs> downshifted. <laughs> yeah, after the initial wow and the new card smell wears off of things, a lot of times you have to truly look at it and go, okay, here's tournament deck X. What are you really going to take out for this amazing card? Which is amazing via nostalgia, I think, the majority of the time. All right. We're going to drop into a thought cast, Bastion Inventor. This is good right on the edge here. I meant to block there. I'm drinking my damn coffee. Watch we lose by one life. Be like, son of a gun. Okay. Here we go. Now then, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Can't get us there, but can get us here. Let's go like this. Come on. Let's see what we can have happen here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Gets us that. And sure. We'll go boom, 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 and boom. I'll thought cast next turn. I got a nice 3 3 fatty here. Hedron Crabby, yes. 
I built a few decks like that. Carnal Page is kind of growing on me a little bit. There's a that option to not have to pay life is, makes it pretty flexible. If you're getting aggro, you you attack with it. If not, you forget about it. Okay, we're going to be in the single digits here pretty soon, and we don't really have a way to gain life. And we've already seen his uh, harsh sustenance tech, so anybody's game here. Fortunately, I have to keep kind of tapping everything to get out these big fatties, but one, two, three, four, five, six, so close to that Mer Enforcer. We should have kind of an unblockable board next turn, though. Okay. I wonder what this is going to hit. That's fine. I think I'm just going to block here. I mean, I'll block one of these two dudes. Black's been exhausted. Yeah, when I was pretty high on Hedger and Crab when it came out in Modern. I was trying like a bunch of people to build with it. Hmm. I think that's probably better fodder for that. Five. I'm going to block here. Be better to stay in these digits. Zombies gets better as it gets wider. This isn't that great of a creature. Let's just turn there. There's a nice blocker. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could play Mer Enforcer here. I well, we can play it either way. Let's thought cast first. Okay, we'll do this. To this. To this. Now we'll play our inventor. Shall we? Can I? Oh, this has to be an artifact. I was like, can I tap Aqueous for him? That'd be pretty sweet. Let's go. Uh, we're not on the aggro right now. To real gently on this. Oh, no, we're going to have to use that for blue. For. Uh, well, this is going to be blue. And we'll tap this. Okay, we got eight power. Let's attack and see what we're going to get next turn. We've got some defense in the welding jar. We're just going to be very slow if we see, uh, you know, who show up. We like bodies, and uh, we can't, beggars can't be choosers with this sort of build, so we're going to throw this on the top. It does trade pretty good with everything, so. Rhinos Raven, that's a pretty interesting idea. Show them blue and then smack them with red once they take out all their uh, Hydro Blasts. Or don't bring them in, I should say. And then really keep them head scratch in the next game. So you can see Aqueous Form doesn't even have to do damage. We're just uh, getting some good quality here. Knowing that we got a good blocker next turn. But we are at 13 life. But we're really going to start showing the pain here pretty quick. What I liked about that block too was that we kind of got rid of Festering Mummy and Carnal Page with one card. It's interesting, splashing white and just using the steps as far as what I can tell. Oh, no, 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 we saw those gorgeous lands, so might be the way to go for it. Yeah. And who knows, maybe I'm still high on this deck next week and there's some changes and we play it again. I don't know. I think it's a lot of fun. Char Belcher and Popper. Who would have thought? I did. Ooh, take a little media deck. Oh, nope. If uh, you would, uh, Shiraz or Little Fight, do the old copy-paste, I'd appreciate it. So this via Sebastian Budzinski, who's um, Budzik online. Very cool list. We've improved it and tweaked it over the week, and now we're bringing it to you live here on Propaganda. And we are undefeated with it so far, but make no mistake, it needs help against elves. So again, if you've got any sort of cool hive mind trick knowledge and you want to share it, propaganda gmail.com. Love to hear your ideas. Maybe together... We can find... Okay, we've got a free attack here. I don't want to be going here, but we do have a regeneration here. First things first, last things last. Let's do this to this. Pay here, tap here. Hmm. 
Yeah, three improvise. I want to attack with that. I'll tap this. Uh, I'll tap this. And I'll tap this. Darn it. Next turn, we'll do some stuff. Right now, we're just going to go over with the Ornithopter. And I believe that's about it. Let's do that. Got to be careful. Harsh sustenance to the face would be five. Frustrating. Oh, from the top of the show, a little fight when I copy paste it. Oh, don't have it pasted anymore. All right, lesson to all of us. We make that a little thing every time or something. I'm not sure. Two, four, five. We go to eight. It's going to suck badly. So we go from here. Hey, we didn't see any Tron either. I've been playing pretty good against that. I tended to have some biased hands against Tron, though, where I kind of ex have like 11 power on turn one. Let's see, grabbing. Ugh. We're going to get zombified. Take five more. It's a very good option to have. Things like Tron and Foglock and stuff. We've got to kill him like this next turn, and I don't think we can. I'm pretty sure we're going to be 4-1 and one and not 5-0 and oh here, but I'll put up a fight. Come on over, guys. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Welding jar. Don't mind seeing that. Let's do one, two. Hold on a minute here. Yeah, this is when I really wish this was on that guy that could do something. But we were really hindered with our early mana base, so I, I needed to make sure that that went that way. As it, as it turns out, we were going to be fine, but not always the case. Alrighty. I'm going to slow roll this. He just got us if he doesn't block. I think so. Think another gem palm polluter to the faces headed our way. All right, we're gonna go boom. Get in three anyway. Boom. Boom. Pow. Still gem palm lethal. Our sustenance. There he is. All right. Well, we go 4 1. Very cool. Losing to one of our buddies, Bingo Banjo, the Propaganda Clan here online. If you want to join, just send us a uh, message when I'm online. He looks across the name. Popper's the game. And bravo. As we So we beat zombies the first round. Then we beat Pestilence, uh, Ponza, and the Mirror. And then we. Zombies got revenge. Sounds like a cool '80s movie, right? So we'll have the deck list here in the in the chat. This is one of my favorite lists, easily of this year. Might be uh, right up there with Brute Squad as far as the coolness. So if you want to see the deck list, here it is. We have four islands, four seat of the Synod, and that's it. Eight lands because we've got four Lotus Petals. But we also have Welding Jar, one Crypt, 
four shield sphere, four walkers, four frog mites, four tooth, four ornithopters, four bone saws, five foundry street assemblers. Now, outside of that and these guys, you can play this with no lands in your opening hand. The only reason we need lands are for three Bastion Inventors, four Hover Guards, and the Draw Spell in Thoughtcast. And you could even argue you don't need lands. You could just go with Lotus Petal, but we're only allowed four. So uh, you can get a little flooded with this list at eight lands. I'm telling you, I know it sounds ridiculous. The only thing that we've got in our board that costs more than one is Aura Flux because Hexproof's a problem and Elves are a problem. We've got this for Elves and Fae and such. We've got this for the obvious uh, Tron Locks, uh, Rakdos, Reanimator, uh, um you know, it's just always always a valid option. Plus, we have the uh, one Tormod script in the side. Uh, two Curfew, Hexproof can be an issue too. If this in combination with this, maybe. We'll see. Uh, if they're good pilots, probably not enough, but sometimes it can get you there. I think I'm like one in five against Hexproof with this thing. But this is the big killer here. Um, against the decks that we are bad against, they can usually block a variety of things, whether it's in the sky or on the ground or so many creatures going around. So this uh, stops mid to late game just crap draws and also gets our guys in sideways so um yeah that's where we're headed so um before i even do anything that's kind of the end of the show little fight if we could try to do that thing now just live and then i'll roll to the end of the show but um i've only got like two little spoof ads coming up after this and uh, nothing new so um yeah we'll just go from there but um thanks for joining me here at propaganda gmail.com is our email if you want to send us your cool ideas which is how this thing happened, right? Aren't you guys all glad that Sebastian sent us this list and we tweaked it all week and here we are, you know? Looked pretty cool. So uh, let's do it, little fight. Excuse me. Dry weather out here. It's been really windy. Nocturnal 32. And jump online, man. I'll give you some cards, buddy. Randy, Nocturnal 32. We'll, uh, we'll get you up and running on Popper, bud. Be pretty sweet. Try copy pasting this command. Okay, I am ready. Excuse me, as we jump to infinity screen. Huzzah! Let's do this. Hey, we can at least do this to go like this. As we say, delete here. Oh, all right. Boom, boom, boom. Sorry for this maintenance guy. Okay, let's do copy, paste this. All right. Uh, why can't I copy, paste that? Let's do this, and let's do this. Welcome aboard. This is my user number. Okay, do I... Do I change the uh, at user or just hit enter? Just hit enter. Okay. And we're good. Go back to here just in case we are. Hopefully that's good. Updated subscriber message. If anybody wants to subscribe and test it, that'd be pretty sweet. I know we've only needed to do this for like three weeks. Apologies, everybody, but uh, as tech savvy as I am in some things, uh, uh, we won't we won't slow down the roll. We'll figure it out next week if we can. But thank you for figuring that out, my friend, engineer of the SS metagame here. As we roll to two more little things here, we'll see you same time, same place, same metagame. Hopefully uh, next next week. Propaganda gmail.com. If you got anything cool to say, uh, check us out. Like, subscribe, do all that crap. Adios, everybody. Woo.